Be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the December 27th, 2019 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48, hour, uh, 48 hours prior to the meeting. We have a remote access meeting option notice and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but the um, according to the Open Public Meetings Act and JSA 1046 in consideration of executive orders number 103, 104 and 107 issued by Governor Murphy declaring a state emer emergency and a public health emergency in the state of New Jersey. The Township of Delanco does hereby notify the public that to protect the health safety uh, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of government, the meeting of the Delanco Township Committee scheduled for September 14th, 2020 is available via electronic format for members of the public who wish to participate in the meeting remotely. The public may participate via remote access um, as listed uh, for the various Zoom login options. Great, thank you so much. Okay, we got a proclamation to start Constitution Week, uh, September 17th through September 22nd, 2020. And uh, we got a proclamation. This came uh, to us uh, through the Daughters of the American Revolution, the DAR, <coughs> and it was initiated in 1956 by President Eisenhower from a congressional resolution that was petitioned uh, uh, by the uh, DAR. Uh, proclamation of the Township of Delanco Constitution Week, September 17th through September 23rd, 2020. Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to the rule of law, rule by law, excuse me. And whereas September 17th, 2020 marks the 200, 233rd anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate it. And whereas Public Law 91915 guarantee, guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designated September 17th through 23 as Constitution Week. Now, therefore, I, Michael Templeton, by the vested of as Mayor of the Township of Delanco in the County of Burlington, New Jersey, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through 23, 2020 as Constitution Week, and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting, protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties, and uh, signed in the test. So, something to think about in these uh, trying times with their constitution under daily abuse. So, uh, ordinance 2020-10, uh, an ordinance to amend the ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township of Blanco providing for and determining the rate of compensation of officers employed and employees to set the current year's rates for the members of the Delanco Public Works Department. Second reading by title only and public hearing. Hearing is now open to the public on ordinance 2020-10 only. Any comments, please? Aaron, we wanna make sure that everyone uh, is unmuted because we are open to the public uh, for a public hearing on ordinance 2020-10. I'm not controlling their muting. They will have to unmute themselves if they wish to speak. There are public in the meeting yes, as well. There are several. Um, so. <laughs> Mayor Templeton has opened the meeting to the public for uh, comments or questions on ordinance 2020-10. If there are any members of the public that would uh, wish to comment or ask questions on this ordinance. Hearing no comments or questions, uh, hearing is now closed to the public. Uh, a motion please for ordinance 2020-10. Uh, so moved. So moved. Oops. <laughs> I'll second. Who got there first? Kate. I did. Motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by Mr. Olette. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, ordinance 2020-2020. 11 amending the township code chapter one governing general provisions to amend a list of payable offenses under the general penalty provision second reading by title only in public hearing 
Hearing is now open to the public for ordinance 2020-11 only. Any comments, please? Hearing none, meeting is, or hearing is now closed yeah. to the public. Oh. Was there a comment there? Hearing none, uh, a motion please for ordinance 2020-11. Yeah, they're talking. No motion, Fern. I'll second. Here you go. Motion by Fern Lett, second by Chris Holland. Roll call please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olat. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, public comment statement. Purpose of the public comment session is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Del Delanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing information, uh, hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. This is the first of two sessions. If you have a comment or question, please uh, state your name and address, and we'll try to do the best we can to answer. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, this is Stephen McLaughlin. I live at 740 Rank Ocas Avenue. Um, okay, so I would like to make a sort of general comment. Um, I noticed on, on the agenda for this meeting, there's gonna be a discussion of the possibility of uh, starting a parks department here in Delanco. Um, my concern is really about Hawk Island. Um, I know that there have been rumblings about plans for putting in a park in Hawk Island for many years. And it came up at a township committee meeting earlier in the summer. And I just wanted to throw in my two cents, which is to me, what, what I hope happens um, <laughs> back there Basically, I hope that the plans that you are making and approving going forward uh, really put an emphasis on conserving Hawk Island in its natural state uh, I, and, and preserving the uh, plant and animal species that exist back there. Uh, and that means to me, trying to keep foot traffic low. Um, I'm, a little bit, like, I'm a little bit worried that, that um, yeah, as I say, uh, high foot traffic is gonna, is gonna cause problems. Um, to me, the, the real problem back there and the real scourge of Hawk Island at the moment is people from out of town coming in on boats, you know, on the weekends, on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon and having bonfires and throwing trash around. Um, and so <laughs> there is a real trash problem back there. You know, there's, there's an issue, um, but I'm just, to me, I'm hoping that whatever plans are made for Hawk Island are, are as minimal as possible. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and, 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 and uh, try to reduce <laughs> foot traffic. Okay. Um, I think that just about does it. Thank you for uh, listening to my comment. Thank you for oh, making it very yeah. important. I think uh, as we go through the meeting, that topic's gonna come up in a couple different ways. And so we'll, I'll uh, defer the answers and information and let that come out as we discuss uh, those issues uh, as we get into the meeting. Uh, any other public comments, please? Thanks. Okay, hearing no further questions or comments from the public, uh, this uh, public comment session is closed at this time. Wait, can we, uh, can, we can I comment? Go ahead. Uh, Jay Cohen, Go ahead. Okay, uh, Jay Cohen, 625 Delaware Avenue. I'm Go sorry ahead. it took a minute for us to uh, unmute. Will the township be um, having a, a trick or treat this year? Mr. Cohen, um, your email will be entered as correspondence later in the meeting. Okay. But if the mayor and committee want to address their question now, they can, but, um, but I did receive your email and planned on entering it as correspondence. Okay, thank you. I, I guess I'm not familiar with the procedure. That's okay. <laughs> We, we have another meeting at eight, so we will need to um, Zoom someplace else. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we would like to be present for the discussion if that's possible. Well, do you just want to uh, uh, I'll just open it up for the committee and 
Mrs. Lord, do you want to just read their their letter at this time, or see yeah? Well, it's a letter from Jay Cohen, Mr. Cohen, um, expressing um, concern about the um, trick or treating this year, given the COVID and the crowds uh, of people and children, and um, recommended that the committee consider suspending uh, trick or treating this year. Yeah, I, I'd like to say. Um, Partly because of my age and partly because of my health status, I'm not comfortable having uh, the usual number of kids that would, would normally come to our door, which exceeds 200, as Mr. Templeton is very, very aware as he lives next door. Um, so I, uh, I, I won't be able to participate. Not that we don't like it. I mean, we enjoy it. Um, so. I know that the township is a matter of policy. <laughs> Students can't even go back to school yet. So I'm wondering if we had an opinion as to the advisability of, of, um, of trick or treat night. I think the, the, the intent uh, was to hear, hear your letter uh, during correspondence and, and you've provided some additional background, Mr. Cohen. And, uh, uh, given uh, that we're at the 14th of September, that um, at this, you know, with a little bit of lead time, that uh, uh, folks that do want to put together some kind of alternative Halloween trick or treat activity that's safe uh, and does not uh, compromise uh, the COVID bubble that many of our residents have uh, worked so hard to put themselves in over the last six months or so. Uh, doesn't compromise that or uh, threaten it. So uh, I, I, I don't know if, if the, the committee or the administration is, is, uh, has enough information or is ready to, to pull the plug on it, but uh, the intent was to you know, uh, talk about your letter and uh, any other uh, comments from residents and so forth and, and not uh, 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 as a blanket reaction, cancel Halloween, but give whatever alternative uh, other organizations, the school, recreation, uh, other uh, community groups, time and a little bit of reaction time to come up with something else that maybe is uh, maybe out of the field of dreams on the Saturday afternoon since Halloween falls on the Saturday uh, or at the uh, school parking lot, something that's open air. Um, uh, there's what uh, Mrs. Lore helped me out. The uh, trunk, trunk or treat, treat or trunk or something like that. You got it. It was a um, trunk. It, some organizations do a trunk or treat. That's mainly, uh, mostly to give the children an alternative to wandering the streets to, uh, to it's more for um, their yeah. safety and in gathering in one location rather than all over the community. But I think a, a key point is that if if people uh, do not want trick-or-treaters uh, at their door in this environment, in this uh, COVID environment, that if, uh, as usual, after your normal trick-or-treat hours, uh, like we have in the past, you turn the lights out, trick-or-treat's over. But if people, residences, keep their, their front porch, front uh, walkway lights extinguished, that that's a sign that their that house, that resident, is not open for a tr any trick-or-treat activity and that uh, the trick-or-treaters respect that. And that's uh, probably a starting point. So, um, committee, any on, committee have any other, uh, any comments to add at this point? Uh, I'd like to add a comment, um, Kate Fitzpatrick. Um, Dobbins uh, Methodist Church has always had first night on uh, Halloween and I, since we haven't been meeting at the church, I don't know whether they plan to do it this year, but it usually involves uh, activities for the kids as well as candy, the band's usually playing. And it's, a, it's really a nice night. It usually starts at five, five to eight. Um, I will look, we'll look into if they're still gonna do that this year. Um, but I would think it would be up to the individual or it's just a little too soon to comment at this time to make a decision. Anybody else? Thank you. Uh, uh, 
one of the unique things this year is Halloween's on the Saturday, which uh, I guess normally it's during the school week for the most part. Uh, so I think this year children are going to be going out. It'll probably start out earlier in the day. And uh, so we need to take that into consideration too uh, on what type of effect that would have on the community. Chief, did you have a comment there? Yeah, I'll just put in my two cents. As of right today, my, my thinking is that a trunk or treat is not the best approach because you're asking for more people to gather in a smaller area, whereas they're out spread out through the town. And then the second uh, item that you might want to think about is have an op opt out list where the residents can opt out and then maybe the township can provide yard sale or yard uh, signs saying we're not participating in Halloween this year uh, due to COVID and to make the announcement before they even get on the walkway. So just, just an idea. Yeah. Yeah, I had heard the, kind of the, the opposite suggestion is an opt-in uh, for trick-or-treat. So whichever uh, seems to attract the, the larger number. Uh, all right. Uh, I suspect, uh, like I said, uh, maybe some other community group We'll, we'll, we'll figure out or come up with something that's uh, safe and uh, we'll make a call on this at the uh, first. Uh... Yeah, John, go ahead. I just feel that <clears throat> for us to stop Halloween is a violation of, you know, families doing what they want to do. Look, we didn't, we didn't stop the kids from this COVID quarantine. They've been up and down with their bicycles, hanging at 7-Eleven in the school. Uh, they're, they've been active the entire time. And I just think that if a family wants to chance, uh, you know, going door to door to their friends or family or neighbors, um, I don't see the harm in it. Uh, uh, you know, if you don't want to do trick or treat, shut your lights out like every other year, or just leave your candy on the front step. I, I just don't know why we're even getting involved in this. I don't think we should uh, permit it or not allow it, just like the yard sale. People are going to have a yard sale, whether or not we say, hey, it's, it's yard sale day. If we don't say it's yard sale day, they're still going to do the yard sale. And I think it's legal for them to do a yard sale. I don't think there's any executive order against uh, yard sales or uh, trick or treat. So um, that's my opinion. I don't think we should get in the way. Let the, let the families do what they want to do. All right. We'll probably make a call or, uh, or have some uh, further guidance at the uh, first meeting in October. That's what uh, October... The 5th? October 5th, yes. October 5th, so. Uh, uh, Mayor Templeton? Yes, go ahead. Hi, this is Joan Cohen. Uh, my name was also signed to the letter that, that Jay and I wrote. Um, and, you know, I, I have, you know, just two concerns, two, two further concerns that, um, we're saying that the children, the children are not even returning to school until November 4th. So at this point, it is not safe for them to go back to school. And furthermore, I mean, we get, last year we had upwards of 250 kids come here. And I mean, we've been here 33 years. We love the town, we love, you know, we love the whole thing. You know, I, I agree with Mr. Brown that if, if People want to do it within their own, you know, people that they know. But we didn't know 250 kids that came to our home last year. So I don't know that we could turn the lights out at four o'clock when they come knocking on the door. No. The idea that maybe we would opt in, I think that's an interesting thought. But we just wanted to share our concerns early so that you could consider Consider whatever you're going to consider. No, no, I'm glad for the for the early warning notice, and uh, like I said, get, it gives everyone time and space to think this through. And uh, Wednesday, I've got a conference call with the health department. I'm sure that that I'll have certainly ask that question if it doesn't come up uh, with the county health, uh, with their uh, suggestion or guidance or, uh, or, or what they would like to see. So, no, appreciate Thank it. You. Very important. Any other comments? All right, uh, let's see, that was 
the public comments period. We'll close that at this time. Comments and reports. Uh, professionals, let's see. I think we have a lot from both of you. Who wants to start? Uh, Mr. Heinold. Good evening, everyone. Um, let me just flip through a couple of the... Harry, I'm not sure what you're going to cover, so I might skip a couple of things and then jump in when you get to them. Yeah, I think we cross over on a few things. I did want to give everyone a heads up on a couple of things, um, more on the legal side. The, the second phase or phase 2A is, this is being called for misfits over uh, at Stanker and Galetto redevelopment area is in process. Um, I've worked extensively with Joe Rahman to get a schedule of payments that um, we are convinced is correct in terms of what the pilot will generate over the course of its life. And I just wanted to give you a heads up that that's going to be on before the committee uh, in short order. And um, it's just, uh, I just circulated something about it today. So I didn't want to sort of blast everybody with it as we come into this meeting. I think it's appropriate you get the information, review it. If there's any questions, let me know. And, and then um, the mayor and, and Janice can decide when they want to put it on the agenda. The, um, uh, so that's, a, I consider that to be good news. And the other thing I'll point out is that when the pilot uh, program was entered into the, the actual rents um, if there were any, if they exceeded the minimum rents in the agreement, then the actual rents or what it was based on the actual rents that we're, we're seeing out there are higher than the minimum rents that were agreed to. So it's an added benefit to, uh, the municipality. Um, Harry, I'm going to leave the, uh, maybe as we transition, I'll bring up the, the easement issue on Cooperstown Road. Um, I did want to mention also, and Mayor, I'm not sure if you wanted to bring this up or not, but the discussion about Hawk Island and the, uh, the fact that we now own the, the acreage out there that we acquired by donation. There's, yeah, a, there, there's a fairly small tax lien on it. Um, Aaron circulated that information today. It's less than $4,000. And uh, there was some discussion about us going ahead and discharging that tax lien. So we, I feel like the committee should make that call. Um, theoretically, somebody who holds that tax lien could try to file a foreclosure action against us and acquire the property from the township. It seems to me that it's a fairly small amount and we should just go ahead and pay it off and discharge it. The second part of that discussion was out of what funds. Um, and I had been thinking possibly out of open space funds, the mayor, uh, not to speak for you, Mike, but had some thoughts that general funds at this point in time would, would leave more options to the township depending on what happens in the future. And uh, I, I actually agree with that. I think that that's a good idea. and. And if the funds are available, which Richard, I'm sure, has said he could find somewhere that, uh, in our budget, then um, I think that that would be the best route for the committee to take, which is to go ahead and pay it off and pay it out of the general funds at this time. Do you have any comment, Mr. Schwab, on that? Yeah, I would uh, tend to agree. Uh, we can charge it to it's a legal expense and it's part of the process. And so I think that's the smart thing to do if you pay it out of the open space. You've got that uh, uh, potential connection to that in the future. So that's a smart way to do it. So I'd like to make sure that there's a uh, consensus to do that. And we will uh, then process the payment. In fact, maybe we can even uh, do a, a motion uh, to authorize the uh, payment of $3,813.32 to the lien holder uh, out of the 20 20 budget legal OE. Does anybody uh, think any member of the governing body agree? Then you can make a motion a second and say aye, and we can be done with it. I'll motion. I'll second. Can we go ahead and pay? 
Got a motion by Mr. Ouellette, the second by, I missed you, got that in. I tried, but I think Kate followed close. My name was Kate. All right, Kate, Ms. Fitzpatrick with the second. And you want a roll call or all in favor? No, just all in favor. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. So um, Doug, Doug, on that then, we will not need a formal resolution or? I'm, I'm gonna do a resolution memorializing, memorializing and just put it on the next agenda for the consent agenda items. Okay. I just, that way well, there's always a paper trail of what, what happened if anybody has to look back at this issue in years to come. Good idea. Uh, the, the last uh, couple things, we, Joe Rahman and I just went through the county board appeal process, tax appeals. And we don't have a lot of tax appeals, um, but there is a, a plaintiff's firm that does some fishing. I wouldn't be surprised if many of the people on tonight's meeting have received letters from them in the past. Um, and what we're finding is, is that uh, unfortunately, they're not really doing much at the county board of appeal level. And then sometimes they're trying to do just enough to survive and take it up to state tax court. And Joe and I are actively trying to um, defend against that because in our opinion, the, the, the county tax board process is supposed to mean something and it's supposed to dispose of cases if it can. And there's not really uh, a very cost effective way to handle some of these assessed uh, properties are only $118,000 and many of them come out of uh, River's Edge. So the county tax board heard our arguments and they're gonna be making a decision on that um, uh, this week. So we'll let you know how that goes, but um, we're hopeful that we don't get a, a handful of state tax court appeals out of this process because I just don't think it's a very fair or efficient way to litigate these things. Um, and then uh, just as a general note, we've had a lot of land matters knocking around and I think we're pretty close to resolving all of them. We had the sale of the Hickory lots, we acquired the Hawk Island parcel, we acquired the Gateway Park edition, we acquired 200 Ash Street. Um, I think the only thing that's still out there at this point is to wait and see what happens with the, seven, the parcel behind 7-Eleven. Right, I'm having discussions with a couple of the interested uh, property owners back and forth. They have a lot of different ideas. So once I get done talking to them, I'll bring it back and let you know what we're gonna do with that. Okay, but hopefully uh, land transactions R us is coming to a <laughs> close soon. And then um, the last thing is, Harry and I have talked a few times over the last uh, week or more and, and a few other of us have as well over the, revisiting this Cooperstown road sidewalk issue. And I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Harry because it's really more of a uh, planning and engineering issue. Um, but I, I did just, I sent to Harry today a letter that we had gotten in from the Boyds who are one of the three impacted property owners up there. And um, we may, if we need to talk about this too much at length, we may need to go in executive session, but. But essentially, when we've tried this process a couple of times before, it really hasn't gone on anywhere because the residents haven't been interested and the demands have been, if they've been responsive, the demands have been excessively high, prohibitively high. Um, and the committee's talked about that before. So, um, so Harry, I don't know if you want to add anything at this point other, you know, about what's going on on your side of the equation at this point. Sure, sure. Um... Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a few items involved with this. Um, first is the DR Horton uh, easement that Doug was talking about. Um, the, the way the, the plans are approved was that they had had to build a sidewalk there if the township could obtain the easement to put the sidewalk. Uh, as Doug mentioned, it's not looking very good on getting that. Um, in addition to that, uh, DR Horton came into the township to put in uh, a fence. What, what they're concerned about is the people coming from the train station, cutting through their development out to Cooperstown Road. Um, it, it's technically not the shortest route, but it appears to be the shortest route. 
So when you get off the train, it looks like that's where, the way you would want to walk. Um, now that would solve the problem with not having a sidewalk in the front, but DR Horton is proposing to put a fence, basically fence their entire property, and then also add gates at the um, Ron Avenue uh, entrance. To put up the fence, they have to go back to planning board um, to get or land use board to get their um, their site plan revised. Uh, but there is the issue of gating the roadway, and that's where the township would get involved. Um, I don't know if there's any good solutions to this. Um, I know back when it was discussed when Havnanian uh, had the project, when we couldn't get the easements, it was discussed that they were going to allow the people to walk through the development um, to get to the train station. Uh, so that's kind of where we stand with D.R. Horton. They, you know, the, they, they act, they came into the township to try and get, they tried to pull fast one actually and tried to get a permit from the construction office to, to put the fence up. Um, construction office and the, and the township officials were smart enough not to let them do that uh, and told them they have to go to the planning board. Um, but again, it's also a township issue as, as, as well as planning board or land use board. And Harry, you have a contact that you've been dealing with on site issues. You're going to set up a meeting, right? I, I did, um, and they're they're very willing and, and want to set up a meeting because they're 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 higher ups are extremely concerned about this issue, um, and they're they're pretty much willing to do bend over backwards whatever we want them to do. Um, so, so I don't I know. That's what um, I don't know if there's a standing committee that we have, subcommittee that we have, or mayor, if you just want to be the point person on it, but the, I don't know where this discussion is going to lead. It seems to me from both a legal and a planning and engineering standpoint, we're talking about a public right away, you know, that can't be gated. That's not, that's a non-starter in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So Great. if they know that, then I'm not sure if that just ends the whole discussion or if they still want to talk about trying to establish Cooperstown Road as a viable point of pedestrian tra traffic and the hope that that's used then. And if it's a good sidewalk system that people will gravitate towards it because of that, I, I don't know. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of baffling. I mean, it's that the Horton folks didn't even, I mean, it kind of seems to be they're surprised that there's a train across the street, you know, that blows its whistle every 15 minutes. Um, I was looking at the site plan uh, drawings today, and there's a dedicated crosswalk in the site plan from the, the current DR Horton development right into the train station. So it's, it's there in black and white. Um, I don't think, uh, any sidewalk, uh, granted, it'd be great if we could do something out on Cooperstown Road, the siting, the, the difficulties, as you mentioned, with some of the property owners, and I can understand their position, but really the siting and topography makes it extremely difficult. But uh, uh, coming from the train station or coming down uh, Cooper Street, you can see the platform, you know, diagonally through, the, you know, that, that, res that development. And so you're going to head that way anyhow. It's it gets you off a busy roadway and it's quieter, and you're naturally going to select that anyhow. Even if we build a sidewalk, or we're able to put a sidewalk in on Cooper Street. So, um, I'm yeah, I mean, I I tend to agree, Mike. I think if even if you had a sign up that said, uh, "This is the shortest route to," you know. <laughs> uh, RLS technologies and you know th that okay. people would still yeah even if it's just to be off Cooperstown Road and walk through the development and maybe feel a little bit safer because there's not the same speed of tra traffic around them uh, it's a difficult issue and I think one that that Peter Hobnanian was intimately familiar with and fully expecting and understood and I I, I think in the transition that we lost some of that understanding and that the some of the initial residents are maybe complaining and they're trying to 
respond to those complaints. And the other thing is if, if you put a, a fence up or gate it, okay, if, you know, hypothetically, if, if that's all, all happens, the streets eventually get turned over to the township. So obviously the gate comes out and the fence come, has to come down. And uh, you're looking at uh, blocking access to the county trail systems on the Rancocas Greenway and, and through uh, the other side of the development to uh, Pennington and uh, the Field of Dreams. So it's, it becomes a, a, a greater impediment to the community as a whole. Um, I don't know if uh, one or both of you in your contacts with the Horton folks want to express that, uh, or if you think a sit down with uh, a, a, a one or two of us from the committee and administration and, and you in the room, I don't know if, if that. Harry, may, maybe, maybe in setting up a meeting or offering to set up a meeting, give them the lay of the land and see what they want to do, if they want to keep pressing on or. Sure, that's not a problem. Um, we could even do a conference call. Yeah, but I just think before we even get into all of us getting on a phone, if you give them sort of the nuts and bolts of here's here's how okay. it's going to go on these key issues, then I think they'll have something to think about or whether they want to keep pursuing it or not. Gotcha. Yep, I, I can I can do that. John, you had a comment. Uh, comment. Uh, if you if you do that at the DR Horton community, you're sort of making a uh, gated community. I don't know if that was ever approved. Secondly, the other residents on the other side of the tracks, Spruce Street, Walnut Street, Pennsylvania Avenue, Hickory Street. Uh, when I walk those neighborhoods and talk to people, they one thing that they would love is that the train traffic does not walk through their neighborhoods. We can't, we can't cut those streets off. Right. I, I don't really feel that we should be cutting these streets off. But a lot of what Mike said, the county trail system, um, you know, and uh, plus if John has to uh, plow the streets, you know, eventually what, what you got to go through uh, gates. I, I, that's not what was approved. Originally, when that project came in, it was all part of the, uh, you know, the light rail redevelopment. It was going to be a big uh, center square in the middle of the property. And through the years, it's changed and this and that. But I don't think the townsfolk ever, you know, foresaw that as gated. Uh, and we never allowed Newton's Landing to be gated either. So um, that's. So, that. Yeah, I, I'd like think? to add a comment. I'd like to add a comment um, that was originally supposed to be a transient village. So uh, the transit. purpose. Transit. <laughs> transit, yeah, transit uh, village. So, I mean, the whole purpose of the development was for access to the light rail. So to stop other um, riders from walking through there, uh, I, it, it's impossible. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have the right to do that. And I think that Havnanian may have been laxed in advising D.R. Horton of the entire development and the end of that project, but it was certainly an open community people could walk through there. That was one of our recommendations when we couldn't put the sidewalk on Coopertown Road was actually to put uh, something behind Coopertown, be behind the development, a walkthrough. So um, that's not gonna work. And it's, uh, it's gonna be a steep climb if uh, they do pursue this to the uh, planning board. Uh, that feeling is gonna be even stronger there. So, yeah, if it, in your conversations, uh, Harry and Doug, uh, if you can express that history, and uh, um, I guess D.R. Horton shouldn't have uh, sort of taken a wider view of things. Okay. And I, I think it's one of the things you get, you get, you get used to it. It's, it's, it's a residential development adjacent to a commuter rail line. That's what's going to happen. And the people of Delanco on the other side of the tracks have been living with that for 20 years, so, or 15 years. So anyway. Okay, I'll certainly take care of that. What else do you have, Harry or Doug? Um, do you have anything else? Yeah, I have quite a few things actually. Um, I, I I kind of revised my report, um, so it's a little bit clearer on on the different projects. Um, so I'm not going to go through it all, but the. Um, the 2020 uh, local aid 
project, DOP projects, and the uh, township road projects. They're combined into one contract. They're at the state now being reviewed. As soon as the state gives us the okay, we can go out to bid. Um, I'm anticipating that we could receive bids um, on October 15th. And then if it's okay with the, with the mayor and, and committee, we could award on the 19th, the meeting of the 19th um, for those projects. That would be my anticipated schedule. Uh, in the meantime, I'm also going to meet with John and Richard to review the plans and make sure that they're okay with it. And if there's any changes, we can make those, those changes. Yeah, Harry, with that timetable, are you still talking about having the work done this fall? Yeah, yep. Okay, and we always run into that issue of yeah. last minute. We Okay. Weekend, um, we're anticipating actually that we're going to get better prices in the spring. Um, reason being, a lot of the townships have cut their budgets. There's a lot less grants out there. Um, so we think there's going to be a lot less construction next year going on. Um, so, so yeah, if we, if we postpone those to the spring, you might get better prices. Interesting. Um, but it could be done this fall. It's up to, you know, it's, it's your call. Okay. All right. See what All right. Well, let us know when you're ready to come in and show it to John and I. We can discuss the timetable and the cost issues. Okay. If you got your updated cost estimates. Yep. Okay. And thank you for rearranging the report so it's grouped. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, it's a little bit clearer. Um, I'm just going to be one of the miscellaneous items. Uh, the next discussion we have is 200 Ash Street. Um, I believe everyone received our structural report. Uh, we already did this specialist report, if you recall, in a while back, and then uh, we now have the structural report. Uh, if you have any specific questions, I'd be glad to answer them. But essentially, what we have there is there's some some minor roof issues. Um, that's not a big deal. Uh, but there are some center columns and some brick columns that, that are that are showing signs of failing. Um, they're not at the point of an imminent danger, but they, in order to occupy the building, uh, they, they should be repaired. Um, I, in the, the, the last page of my report, I, I gave you a little breakdown of costs, and that's probably the most important thing that you're looking for at this time. It, um, we have a couple options. We can either um, renovate the building essentially and make it safe to to get a permanent CO. Uh, and this would just be for structural issues. This is not talking about cosmetics and electrical plumbing, minor repairs. Um, you're looking at somewhere between 120 and 150 thousand um, dollars to do those repairs to, to make it structurally sound for for CO. If we just left it vacant, but made it structurally sound that it would stay there for years to come, um, there, it, it's, a, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, you're looking at seventy to ninety thousand um, dollars, and I'm checking on what there's an issue whether the stairs need to be all the stairs are rotted out, uh, and this might be a question for the chief uh, as well as the fire department whether they want those stairs um, repaired. Uh, in case there's an issue in the building that there's safe access for the police or firemen to get to the different floors. Um, but but that, that price includes repairing the stairs uh, um, in, in, in my estimate. Um, if the, to the cost to demolish the building completely, just at this point, you're looking at about 85 to 105,000. Uh, and that would be taking the building down and destroying the site with either grass or stone, whatever we want to finish the the surface with. Um, so, so that's kind of where we stand. Um, it's not, there, there, there are signs of, of failure in the exterior walls, but there's, 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 no, there's no deflection in the walls, um, the, the, the brick wall, which means that it's, it's, it's basically settlement cracks. Um, if there was deflection in the walls or that, that was coming in the future at any time, then it would be a an imminent danger would have to be taken care of. Um, so if it remains, you can just leave it as it is. I would suggest that that periodic inspections are done on it, however, to make sure it doesn't get any worse. Um, because if it does get worse, then 
then it would have to be addressed. Um, so that's that's kind of where we stand on the structural end, end of it. And it's a decision of, of yours. This Harry, on the, on the middle option, does that include, you mentioned uh, uh, when we spoke uh, a day or two ago, uh, does that include uh, closing up the roof where there were some, some holes in the roof and uh, some weather was able to, you know, get in there and make things worse? Does that include a temporary fix on that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, the other issue was uh, uh, small furry animals, uh, raccoons, uh, scaling the tree and entering the building. Uh, would it help if that tree, those trees on the west side of the building were taken out to the that would remove that or is that worth considering it, it, it certainly is worth considering yes um not only for their access because they'll find access no matter what you what you do but it does take away the, the it's very yes. wooded on that side and it gives them cover to to, to 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 live and stay in that area it was cleared out it certainly would deter them from, right. from going in the building are there any questions from the committee members on uh, mr fox's structural report and you could put it as a discussion item for your next meeting. There's no decision making that's needed tonight. No. So if you want to look at it and put it as a discussion item for more detail we'll, at the next at the October meeting when Harry's here again. Yeah, we'll carry this forward. Uh, give everyone time and space to think about it and, uh, and uh, make a, the best call that we have with the information that we have. Uh, as Mr. Fox said uh, previously, there's still some remediation that has to be done on the site on the ground and uh, some more further testing and uh, in any case uh, there's some interior uh, uh, materials that have to be removed regardless whether the building stays or where the building goes so um, that's also in 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 the mix yeah the uh, the soil testing is scheduled for i think september 24th for the the contract we already approved by eri so that'll be Doing that soil removal, and we'll see how bad it is. Can I ask one question for Harry? So, if if we choose option two, is that like does that work as a stopgap so we can kind of shore it up for now and then move towards option one? It's a little bit more. Yeah, it's a little bit more than a stopgap. Um, as of right now, it it, there, it doesn't have to be shored up. Um, other than maybe the steps for, for safety issues. Um, and, but it would have to be monitored. We, we, someone would have to take a look at that, you know, periodically, you know, monthly to make sure it's not getting any worse. Okay. What the middle option does is basically would shore it up so we could stay there for five, 10, 15 years till you, somebody does something with it. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's not like across the board then, it's just this vacant historical building that we just look at, it can still become something. Correct. Okay. Be very expensive, no matter what you know you do with it. But yes, sure. Gotcha. And uh, I just want to remind everyone, or uh, that uh, uh, the Lanco Fire Department and uh, with uh, Beverly and Riverside conducted a walkthrough of the uh, property and the in the building itself. Uh, shortly, a couple of days after we took possession of it to familiarize themselves with the property and the structure. And uh, I believe they treat it uh, as, a, as a no enter uh, building based on the, the stairways that, uh, particularly the, uh, the south stairway that uh, uh, is in poor condition. Uh, the north stairway is passable, but not the best. And there are no utilities that are functioning on the property as well. So. And, uh, but the, the fire department, the EMS is very familiar with that. Uh, and that's purely as a uh, precaution in case uh, someone does get in there and needs to be um, brought out. So anyway, any other questions, comments on that, that uh, topic? Okay. Anything else, Harry? Uh, yeah, I have a few more items. Um, quickly, uh, the, the New Jersey American Water Company paving is all completed. Um, they're working on punch list items, a minor thing. Fern? On uh, Walters Avenue from Burlington up to, uh, let's see, Orchard. Yep. Uh, that street's in really bad shape from all the uh, things that they dug up. Are they going to repave that for us? 
No, that was one of the roads um, that we switched. Uh, if you recall, we, we, they would have had to pave half that roadway. So what we did was we paved full roadway widths in other areas. For, for instance, Union Avenue. If you look at that, that's all completely paved. Um, Mulberry, we paved that whole street. Um, and the Walters Avenue Street is being done with this, this next road, road program that I spoke of earlier. Um, the one that's we're looking at October possibly bidding on. So okay, Walters so Avenue, within the next six months or eight months, that street would be repaved. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and, and with that, uh, the, the, the water company, we, we did make out pretty well on that. We got a lot of streets paved um, pretty nice. And we even got a little bit more. I got, I estimate about 10% more road paving than, than they actually owed us. Um, Cause I was a little upset with them a while back on some of the construction techniques and what they were doing. Um, so, so we made out pretty well on that. Um, that was, I think it was a win for the township. Yeah, it, look, it looks nice. Union looks nice. Yeah, it came out nice. Harry the hammer. Harry the hammer. Yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, township um, uh, basin in the back, I did speak with uh, Dolan contractors. Uh, mm. They're the ones doing the farm field uh, development. Uh, and, and they are 100% willing to do whatever we need to do to to relieve ourselves of that basin. Um, we might even be able to get rid of the basin entirely, but at, at least we can put a, a pipe connecting into their system and, and that'll take care of the townships issues we've been having with that, that little basin. Uh, so that's kind of good news. Thank you. <laughs> I'll like put that file to the side for a while, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Um, and last thing I have, um, the and this goes down to the Cooperstown Road. Uh, there is a grant, um, a set aside grant. It's a, it's a federal fund um, and, uh, that's administered by D, uh, DOT. Uh, it's called a TAP grant. Um, it's a pretty tough grant to get, but the Cooperstown Road sidewalk would, would actually fit that grant. Um, generally, it's a federal grant, so you can get monies up to five, $600,000 um for this grant it's it's specifically for um ulterior motives modes of of, of um transportation bicycles pedestrians they like to redo railroad tracks things like that the good thing about the grant is they, they can get a lot of money to do a lot of work the bad thing is the administrative costs are are astronomical um it's being a federal project it's 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 crazy what they look for. Um, the, the, the grant is due November 24th. I would suggest if the town wants to try for it um, to use a grant writer. I mean, we could do it, but it's, I, I would suggest that we could do it a couple of ways. We could just run it through us or you can do a separate contract. Um, there's a grant writer that works for the Bridge Commission, Committee Grants and Planning. Um, that's all they do is, is write these kind of grants. So if we want to go for it, it may pay us to, to, to do that, do it that way. Um, it's kind of up to you whether you feel I can, I can get a, a proposal or I can get a proposal for us to do it. That's uh, just, you know, whichever way you feel comfortable. Um, but, but the grant is out there and it, and it could work for this project. I can uh, jump in. I was going to do this part of my report next, but we're, we had this discussion started with Horton and the issue uh, just around their place. But if you remember, we discussed during the budget appropriating money to have ERI do a master plan for sidewalks from Burlington all Avenue all the way to the end uh, and Creek Road down to Field of Dreams. So we knew exactly where sidewalks ought to be, the decision about which side, both sides, where you do asphalt, where you do concrete, uh, exactly where it would be based on the elevations and to negotiate with the county on what they would do to redo Cooperstown, particularly for the sidewalks between Pennsylvania and the shopping center, which are always below grade and flooded. Uh, we start, talked about that with our school kids. And now we're talking about all the people. Misfits is a very labor intensive operation. And since they've opened, 
the number of employees who are walking up and down has increased. They're about to double their size. So we eliminated that for budget reasons to deal hit the um, uh, our tax rate that we were looking for. Uh, but in order to apply for the grant this year or next year, whenever we do it, you need that kind of work. And if you had that kind of master plan, a discussion with DR Horton and otherwise would be probably much more fruitful. You don't implement it. We had put aside money to do sidewalk in front of the municipal building and the public works, our property. Uh, but that was held up because we didn't have the master plan. My suggestion is that if you're interested in knowing what we ought to do, whether we apply for this grant or not, I've discovered that we can use capital funds for what's called preliminary engineering expenses. They don't have to be related to a particular project that you've done. Usually you have a street project, you allocate the engineering that's related to that project. You have the demolition, the engineering related to that, but you're allowed to charge to capital and we have a balances in the capital fund because we didn't go ahead with any of the sidewalk work that we talked about that we could use for preliminary expenses for engineering. And Harry could put together a proposal to do what we're talking about and see whether or not that's something that's acceptable since we would have the finances for it. So I thought that would just be a good time to bring that up and see what your feelings are, whether or not you want to get that proposal from Harry's firm uh, to do the sidewalk master plan, what it would cost, and then we potentially would have the funds to do it now instead of waiting until next year's budget. Thoughts? Committee comments on, on that? I think it's a step in the right direction, again, trying to resolve our uh, sidewalks issues along uh, Delanco Coopertown Road uh, and having that plan because we're going to have more traffic or foot traffic, again, going uh, towards the Field of Dreams. Uh, we have stuff going along Creek Road now. And on the one side, we have a lot of traffic with motor vehicle and uh, we've got a lot more street traffic out there. Plus we have the new development uh, bringing more traffic along that road. So whatever we can do to get uh, pedestrians and bikes off the main road uh, may not solve, uh, at least we're in the working uh, process to come up with a solution and a game plan uh, to make the road safer. Okay. Any other comments? If you're generally comfortable with that as a, using those funds first, then we could ask Gary to make a proposal and we would need that in order to decide whether to apply for the grant. Depends how fast they can work. Would we be uh, getting the bridge commission or the county to help with the writing process? Is that what I had heard? Well, yeah, they, used to, they used to do that um, in years past, but they don't do that anymore. They they did not contract with a, with a grants writer this year. That will do, they used to do it for free for the towns, but but they don't do that anymore. Hmm. So then we, we can use them. them. Oh, we can use them. Yes, but we'd have to pay them. You got to pay for it. Okay. Well, I, I would like to hear Harry's proposal from the ERI to see um, what this would cost him. For a sidewalk master plan, John, John right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would like to see that as well. Um, because we need sidewalks, better sidewalks from Burlington Avenue all the way down to the train station and beyond. So yeah. it's imperative that we do something because that's the safety issue. Yes. Um, and also on Burlington Avenue, there are some areas where sidewalks need to be replaced. Yeah, I think uh, Harry, we, we actually have a lot of information on Burlington Avenue locations. We just don't have, we're talking about de detailed stuff, including shooting grades, actual blueprint stuff, everything short of getting ready to go out to bids. But here's the locations and that's where the chief and the police would be involved because we are. there's gonna be a point where it needs a crosswalk uh, and where is that crosswalk at the station, down from the station? A lot depends. This whole issue dealing with Horton's development is all related to that. If you remember, remember Kate had talked to Stylex about 
doing a sidewalk. Well, where they wanted to do it is not where Harry thought they ought to do it. So you, you need to everybody agree where it ought to be. You can't do it ad hoc. If Dolan puts in their sidewalk and then we put in ours and we put, then where does the next one go? You have to all connect it. And so it would be worthwhile to know where that, that is. And a lot depends on how quickly they'd be able to put together a plan as to whether or not it'll be soon enough to make this application. Uh, they could also propose to do the application or we get a separate proposal from the grant people uh, that the county used to use. Yeah. So at this point, uh, I need a motion or authorization for Mr. Fox to make a proposal for a master plan. Is that what? Just if that's a consent, I can, we can ask them for it, Harry, if you're willing to uh, submit a proposal. Absolutely. Okay. You know, there's no point in asking him to make a proposal. Actually, the issue you have to decide is are you willing to use the capital funds to pay for it? I'm comfortable with it and recommend that it's the priority. And now that I know that we can legally do it, I wasn't aware we could do that until a few right. months ago. I, I, I think that's a necessary next step. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's proceed that way. And when we get that from him, maybe but he'll have it for the October meeting and we can discuss this further. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Um, that, that's all I have tonight. Harry, I have a question on your Okay. Uh, the Atlantic Logistics, you had stated in your report that um, phase three has commenced, which is uh, the produce place, correct? What is phase four? Uh, that's just, a, it's a vacant lot. There's nothing proposed there at this time. It's in between, nothing. yeah, it's in between the, 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 the produce place and the, the front building. Okay, there's no application on the table? Uh, no, well, that was all approved as part of a, a general site plan, but there's been no building submitted for that, that lot. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Fox? And Doug, uh, you, you completed everything you needed to discuss? Yes, thanks, Mike. All right. All right, very good. Um, department heads, uh, Chief DeSanto. Excuse me, Mayor, I have a few things I want to hit first. I jumped the line there. You Sounds jumped the line. That's so generally I'm okay with that. You know, I'll be happy to go fade away. A um, couple other things. Uh, believe it or not, it's time to start the 2021 budget process. So I know it's a terrible thing to think about. <laughs> so uh, this week uh, we will get the first memoir to the department heads. I know Jesse and John have uh, been looking forward to this uh, for <laughs> months on end. Kitty will be have it done within a day. You know, Janice, I have it done a couple of days. So, but we'll get that started. Uh, that's important to know. The other thing is that uh, was sort of mentioned in Harry's report, and there's some email. We we got the hundred thirty thousand dollar grant from the county for the next phase in Field of Dreams. Uh, the mayor signed it because your, your resolution that. Uh, that, that applied for it said, and you've agreed that you'll sign for whatever uh, is, is approved. That's what we've always done. So Rec asked, when is this going to get done? So we've asked uh, Scott Taylor to put together a proposal. He'll be in touch with Harry if they need uh, the engineer, they work together. So hopefully we'll get a proposal from them to get that thing rolling. So that can be designed. We can get out to bids this winter and that can be spring work. Um, so those are the other things that I uh, want to let you know. I also want to let you know that uh, if later on you discuss issues dealing with the waterfront access due to uh, some uh, good bidding and, and work on the waterfront, there are funds unused from the seawall work that as we talked about with sidewalk, keep in the back of your mind that if we need engineering, preliminary engineering on access issues, because I know we had that discussion at the last meeting, uh, whether it's on the Delaware access or in Rancocas with 200 ash, uh, those funds are available. So as you're thinking through what you need to do, if you need professional engineering advice, there is some funds available to get a proposal to do that. So I want to put that in your heads and then you can think about what you want to do. The alternative, of course, is we cancel the funds 
and it goes and helps pay off the bonds. So there's no no uh, reason not to do that. That would be the r more routine way to do it. But based on the discussion at the last meeting, I thought somebody might have in their heads that they want to get some uh, engineering analysis on uh, uh, access issues. So you have that option also. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Now to the chief. Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll go through two items which are not related and the rest of the items are kind of inter interrelated. First, the, uh, we had a, uh, what you would call, a, I heard, I'm sure you heard of a bicycle, motorcycle run. Well, we had a bicycle run come through town on uh, Sunday. So um, officers uh, cited some individuals which they observed uh, improper operation of the bicycle or even a motor vehicle in one case. And, uh, but we did track down the organizer of this bicycle run. And it was actually employees of a bicycle shop in Burlington. Um, they, they thought um, it'd be a good way to um, infuse business. And so they didn't realize that the, the, uh, the response they got was overwhelming. They had 50 to 100 uh, bikes. Um, so they rode their bicycles and the route was to ride a, to 7-Eleven, turn around and go back to the bicycle shop there on Route 130. And uh, it's called the Burlington County Bike Shop. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. So we spoke with the organizers of this run and we explained to them that uh, you know, their preparation was unacceptable and that uh, anything that needs to be, um, you know, anything like that needs to be run by the different agencies, because we're talking about three or four different jurisdictions. Um, so we advised them that uh, next time that type of um, activity is conducted without the proper permits and permissions, you know, you know the uh, actual organizers will be cited with the appropriate offenses. So I just want to let you know we did address that and that should uh, prevent it from happening again. If it happens again, then appropriate people will be cited uh, for just organizing it. The, um, the other uh, issue I was asked to look at, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick asked me to look at 400 block of Rancocas Avenue, uh, making it a one way out. Uh, I looked at it. I also pulled five years worth of accident reports and, uh, and I, we did our research and we only saw two accident reports in that area in the five years. And one, which was a special circumstance, it was doing the parade and it actually happened on Buttonwood Street around the curve. And it was a gentleman pulling a boat who got caught up in a parade and realized he couldn't get through Rancocas and started backing up and backed up into a car. And the other one was same area. It was around the corner on Buttonwood Street and he sideswiped a park vehicle. Now, after looking at it and you know, looking at the sight lines, what my biggest concern is, is changing that from uh, a one way out only is the people coming off the bridge. Um, I don't know if there's enough warning to make them aware that that is now a one way. Um, I can foresee people just turning down there because it's a force of habit and it's worked at this point. So my recommendation at this point is to leave it a two way. And the other items on the list, uh, would anybody have any comments about that? I'll, I'll let that lie before I move on. Chief, you're talking about uh, as you come up off the bridge, making a left on Rancocas? Making a right. Um, oh, the right yeah. by Gateway Park. Yes. So that would be a one way out coming to. You already have two one ways in. The yeah. other, it's the other section of the road. Yeah. Again. You cut out brought the it to my attention. He asked me to take it to the chief. I've never ran into a problem there. No, it is a little tight. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I haven't right. either, but a red and you're, cu you're cutting out, Kate. What what was the issue? Looks like she froze. Yeah, she froze up there. The, the issue was that uh, there were, you know, a person experienced what they said a near miss uh, car turning. 
down Rancocas, the 400 block, while a car was coming out of Rancocas, to come on to Burlington Avenue, and there was a uh, you know a near miss as it was described near yeah. uh, near head on. Um, I know the the road's tight. That's why we have parking only on one mm -hmm. side of that area. Uh, like I said, my suggestion is to to leave it as is. That's my recommendation. Okay. Because that lower part of Buttonwood would have to be one way as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right. The, uh, these are all interconnected. I'll give you an update. All the signs uh, that we talked about, no swimming, no trespassing. So all the no swimming signs have been placed up in areas where, where there's water access and also uh, on Vine Street and, um, and uh, Walters. There has uh, been no trespassing signs placed, but the, which are multiple uh, languages indicating no trespassing. Uh, we did have a, an operation planned, which was postponed due to the weather. The operation involved the uh, Delanco Police Department and then the New Jersey State Police Marine Unit. And we were gonna try to uh, uh, make a presence known in the beach area of Hawk Island. Uh, we had it scheduled so uh, the Marine police would come uh, in the area of the uh, beach area, and then we would enter by foot. And anyone we uh, came across that we could cite with the appropriate uh, ordinances, we, we would. Um, what we learned, thanks to the mayor, uh, he provided some coordinates, and we went out there with a, a GPS unit. And what we come to find is there is a state property uh, along that Delaware side or Delaware Riverside. Uh, but the area that's being you know, frequent is actually private property. It's, it belongs to a uh, lot one of block 2300, which is privately owned. Uh, we were hoping when we planned this operation that it would fall within the state's property. And so there would be no jurisdiction issues. The state police could, you know, authorize us to issue ordinances on their property, just like we do at the motor vehicle station. Uh, we know we're in charge of that. It's state property, but we still enforce uh, the laws. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, we need the Marine police in the event that we go down there on foot, people hop on our vessels, ride across the water. You know, we're, we're stuck out there, you know, wasting our time. So we're, we're trying to do a joint operation. We're not going to give up. Uh, right now, there's a staffing issue. Uh, some of you guys know why. I can't go into you know, details, but uh, once we get our staffing back full, we're looking to uh, try to do this operation again. And then uh, we're not gonna stop. Um, if we do get one in, in the fall, we're definitely gonna do another one in the spring uh, when, when it starts back up. And so there's, you know, I just want to make you aware that there is plans. Uh, I don't know, just, I don't know if you know, but I, I did uh, put it on social media that we're gonna be out there. I plan on doing that every time we go out there because my intent is not to catch up, catch residents out there just out there walking their dogs or going for a walk. We're trying to deter the behavior that's, you know, causing litter and trash. And that brings me to my second uh, report is uh, I'm trying to establish communication with the owner of that lot, lot number one. Uh, the address on file with the tax office was apparently not up to date. I was able to locate two possible addresses for one of the owners. Uh, what we understand some research is that the other owner listed on the tax records has been is deceased. So I'm trying to establish communication with that owner. And uh, once I gain some uh, communication, then I can talk to our municipal prosecutor and, and see if what, if anything, what we can do about uh, enforcing trespassing and so forth without uh, pulling them from Florida. But I did indicate in my letter that I sent that ultimately they're responsible and uh, my intent to reach out to them is, is not to go down the usual uh, path of just studying the property owner for the trash because I understand I'm sure they're not permitting people to come onto their property. But, um, you know, let's try to establish communication and, and see if we can uh, get something where we can actually enforce on their private property. So that's... Uh, that's basically, I have everything I listed, yes. Uh, Chief, and I think, is uh, John Fenimore, are you still on? Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, is there any further thought or uh, discussion on uh, uh, improving the fence there at uh, Vine Street out to Hawk? Um, I was um, the chief yeah. has talked to me about it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a couple issues there because we tried in the in the past to try to get a new fence there. What a, when we put that fence in there, we put two girders in there because we, uh, back in the heyday, uh, there was a lot of people going out through the gate and all. So we put, I mean, we did it right. But um, what's what's happening now, there's one one gate is, is buried in a tree, tree root system. So you would have a difficult time, I mean, putting a new gate up. If we could get somebody to fabricate a new gate um, that the chief uh, wants to put either, you know, a, a slats in there or something to stop people from going through it uh, would help it better. You know what I mean? And it would stop the kind of the foot traffic. Yeah. Um, you still have a little little problem on either side of the gate uh, where they walk through. Uh, we could easily take care of that. And then we have another big issue that someone has a, a road uh, that's going up there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It never as far as the trash out there, um, we have taken uh, quite a bit of trash out of there. And I, I saw some of the pictures going around, and it sure is. Um, we'll handle it. We'll, we'll, get the, we'll get the trash. Well, do you, um, the suggestion or the question was, was asked of me and, and whether that's uh, something that can be a, a cleanup that would involve uh, some, some of the groups in town or, I mean, it's, it's significant. It's not going to be a one day, one day job, but is, is that something that. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, um, plan for it. There was, there was a lady from DEP. Uh, last year, the, she said that she was going to reach back to me in the fall, um, especially along the Rancocas Creek side. There's a tremendous amount of floatables that, mm -hmm. you know, when the high tide comes in, it all comes in. And actually, the the whole, um, there there is a lot of trash out there uh, from people walking through and just throwing stuff all over. Yeah. I mean, we maintain along the side of the road, which, believe it or not, from the gate all the way out to the points a mile. And uh, I filled in some holes so, um, you know, the, the emergency vehicles can get through there with any problem. There was a couple of trees and tree limbs that were, you know, in the problem, which we took care of all the way out to the point. So... Well, do you want to uh, target a date, maybe uh, in October uh, or early November? Yeah, absolutely. That uh, yeah, we could take it out of the clean communities. We could organize around that and uh, yep, good day out there. Uh, I'll talk to uh, I'll talk to Amber about. It. I'm sure that she uh, would uh, be happy to you know, to do. You know. All right. We'll see what. Uh, yeah. We can organize and, and get some. And, uh, at least you know, if, if you get somebody to propose the gate that you talked about fabricating, we need a price, and then we can determine where we can have funding for that open space or otherwise. So that if there is a gate that's going to get the job done, let's get somebody to give us a price to do it. Yeah. Harry, right. um, could could the contractor who did the seawall would they? Is that something up their alley? That they could possibly do because they seem to be kind of reliable. And well, Thor, Thor, Thor construction, Thor, Thor construction, yeah, get Thor. Yep, yep, that's okay. who we could get. Can yeah. you, uh, Harry, can Good you idea. contact information to me and I'll reach out to them and ask them to look at it? Yep, absolutely. All right. Yeah, yeah. he'd be good. Excellent. Yeah, he's good. Anything else, Chief? No, that, that's all I had on my report for tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Fenimore. Yes. Report. We've been extremely, extremely busy. Um, we've uh, 
we, one good thing this year, uh, all the rain that we've had, we have kept up on the grass every week. Uh, I think there might have been a couple of days that we didn't get back up to the Dunes Trail, but that's um, not all on our priority list. But we have done a good job just keeping up uh, cutting the grass this year so far. Um, I've started stacking the piles of leaves. Uh, we have about about 8,500 uh, cubic yards of leaves. Uh, I started staging them in piles so we could haul them out. We have uh, we had 19 piles that I put into you know big piles, and then we haul them out over to the farmer. And then what we do as we're loading the trucks, we pick out any trash that we see so it doesn't just go out onto his field and then. Um, you know, it's just not right to do that. What I was planning on doing um, was using some of this compost, if, if it was cost effective, um, for spreading it out at the Field of Dreams. And I got a price from the guy that, you know, turns our leaves, and it was like $8,200. Uh, the material that we get, I think Richard said, it was only like four four thousand. Right. So I mean that's a that's a big difference to do it. You know, um, uh, if it just you know it, it's just a big expense. But um, it, it would have been nice if we could do it. But uh, like it's just not really cost effective to do it at this time. So we just been hauling it out of there. Um, We've done in the, in the last two months with all the brush pickup. We've we've done 27 boxes, and that's 15 cubic yards a box. So we've done a, quite a bit of uh, brush removal this year. I don't think that many of the residents can complain about that. And uh, you know, we, we we've been staying on that uh, every Monday. Just so the township committee knows, we pick up every Monday 62 cans that we have all over including the ball fields, down along the river, uh, some on Bryanton Avenue and our parks. Uh, and then we have been, um, Kenny's been spraying, you know, for the virus uh, at the park benches and the bleachers and all over wherever, uh, you know, um, people can sit down. And we've been staying up on that. And, and um I think Kenny marked out the sign, the Chance Way. Uh, we had to get it marked out before we can put a pole up to get that done for the Chance. Yeah. And then um, what else do we um and There was a sign, a street sign that was requested for what, Enterprise Drive? Yes, that's up. Oh, it's up. Okay. Yeah, it's up. All right. All right. It's on... There's a lot of there was there was a big problem there because there's a lot of uh, there's some communication boxes going on. The electric line runs through there because everything's underground, so that was a little hairy. So I think Kenny put it on top of the the stop sign or no, it was another. All right. I don't know if it was on top of it, just so they know that it's you know the enterprise. All right. Thanks. And then um, John. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I didn't know if you were done. I didn't mean to interrupt. You, you, you don't have a question. Uh, John, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Yeah. You're breaking up. Okay. Um, John, did you, uh, do you have top notch in town taking trees down? Yeah, I had, I had them uh, take the tree down on uh, lilac. Three three eleven. Or three no, nine. I don't think it's three fifteen. Three fifteen. Three fifteen. Okay, so it, it all right. I I just noticed that tree going the other day. I don't remember that uh, to be one of the ones coming yeah. down. All and right. I was going to get him to to grind a stump out, but then I know Harry's got that street to be uh, reconstructed, right. and if he takes the stump out without removing the sidewalk and the, the curb line, 
it, it's very difficult because you're, you're you won't get a full job. So right. Harry's going to okay. try to incorporate it in with the construction of the street. That's why we didn't get you know this the the tree the stump removed. All right, thank you. And and then we have uh, one other uh, problem we have uh, down. It's Ray Evelyn who lives next to John Rand Camp. We have an outfall pipe that runs out to the river that is fully covered between uh, debris yeah. and is growed up. And I'm going to try to get the county to come in and help us uh, clean that out. Uh, um, also, the county has, has started the little project on Hazel that the guy's been complaining about the curb and the street. Uh, the county started today. They're going to replace, I think it's about a 15-foot curb, and and uh, they're going to grind the, the the rest of the stump that's out under the asphalt, which has raised. They're going to put new asphalt in there, and they were... Uh, um, we had a couple bidders on them. They were the cheapest. Oh, really? So we're gonna we're gonna pay the county for? Yes. Oh, yep. Sir. We yeah. are on that co-op. Good. The county does a lot of things for the towns now, and you just have to pay. Yeah. Um, so it's a very good thing. Um, generally, their prices are a lot cheaper than you know, getting it getting it from another contractor. So. All right. That should help us. I could talk all night about all the things, but I don't think you want to hear it. But um, if anybody has any questions. Uh, John, can you make a comment on blowing grass into the street? Uh, it's one of my pet peeves. Uh, pe people do not realize uh, what they're doing uh, by blowing the grass clippings out into the street. Um, if if you are a boater, you will probably know in the Rancocas Creek because the Rancocas Creek is is choking out. You can in some spots you can almost walk all the way across. And um, what the biggest thing is, what people don't realize is that when you cut the tops of the grass off, it's mostly weed seeds. So where does it go? It goes out into the street, lays along the gutter goes in along the curve and, and the, you know, the, the asphalt, and then starts growing grass in the street. So you can always tell by looking in the street to see who blows the grass the most. Now, that's not true all the time because if you get a flow of water, it goes right on down the street, and wherever it stops, it'll it'll turn into dirt. And, and uh Believe me, it's 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 going to be a big problem. If I, I just wish that DEP would really tighten up on this, and and realize that if they didn't do anything else but stop people from blowing the grass clippings out in the street, I mean, which all goes to the river, all goes to the, your streams, and you see how these streams are all getting choked out. It's because of you know silt, this grass clippings. You figure year after year after year after year. I mean, it's unbelievable. All right. I know you want to get that in. You mentioned that a couple of times that we've we've spoken. Yes. Thank you. Anything else, John? No, that's it. Great. Right. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Lord, administration. Yes, yeah, so I have a few items and then a, a question for Doug at the end. Uh, the first thing is that the Lankos, uh, Fall Town Wide Yard Sale is scheduled for Saturday, September 26th. Um, we have a lot fewer participants signed up um, by this time, but we uh, are going to hold it out as long as we can before we have to do up the maps. Um, the EMS and fire company will not be participating with their hoagie sale because of the COVID, as well as the Boy Scouts will not be doing their um, food concession either. I wasn't sure about the library if they were planning on having something, but I can have um, uh, Bev reach out to them just to make see if, if the library is doing anything. The next thing is uh, we have Community Cleanup Day scheduled for uh, Saturday, October 17th, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
And this is where um, you can bring your trash and recyclables to the public works. They'll have uh, various bins and dumpsters. And again, that's 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, October 17th. And uh, it's a non-contact event and CDC guidelines for safety and social distancing will be observed. Um, uh, Janice? Yes. Is it possible uh, to, to uh, arrange for a shred that day, the contractor? Uh, another shredding event? Um, we can time. certainly reach out to see if they have that day available. We usually have just been running one a year, but if you if the committee is fine with um, spending the funds for a second one, we can certainly reach out uh, to the vendor and see if they're available that day. Yeah, ask the question. And uh, I don't know if, if anyone else thinks that there's enough. Uh... We, we had a very good response um, at our last shredding. Uh, the truck was basically full. All the bins were full. So. Okay. Yeah, see if there's availability and uh, we'll circulate the question and see if we can make, it, make a call on that and see how much lead time they want. Okay, very good. Okay. The next thing is that um, Kitty and I attended a WebEx uh, remote meeting uh, today with the County uh, Board of Elections and the County Clerk's Office regarding the upcoming November 3rd general election which through executive order number 177, Governor Murphy has ordered it as a vote by mail uh, election for the general election on November 3rd. Um, a lot of um, preparations are in the works, a lot of uh, planning um, for uh, how people can um, do their vote by mail. Uh, right now it's four ways that you can mail your vote by mail ballot back. You can drop it off at one of the secure drop boxes. There will be um, about 13 uh, located throughout the county for secure drop off. Uh, the day of election, voters will be allowed to bring their vote completed vote by mail ballot back to the, um, po the polling place, which for Delanco, all six districts will be voting at the M. Joan Pearson School up on Burlington Avenue. For the uh, primary, we had it at the municipal building and uh, our municipal building is not going to be adequate space enough to accommodate a general election. Again, the um, polling place at the M. Joan Pearson School for all six districts will be for those people that are going to want to vote provisional, um, uh, instead of their vote by mail ballot, which will be a paper ballot, the only people that will be allowed to vote on a machine, and we're only gonna have one machine, are the uh, disabled, and they have to do a, a certificate of disability in order to vote on the machine. So that's very important. Um, the other important part um, is that the vote by mail ballots, every registered voter in, in Burlington County and the state will receive a vote by mail ballot. Um, people do not need to do a absentee or a mail-in ballot application. Every registered voter will receive a vote by mail ballot. And those ballots are going to go out. The county has approximately 320,000 20, ballots to distribute, to mail out. They're gonna start mailing them on um, September 30th and that mailing will be conti uh, continued throughout that first week of October. Um, you know, uh, they can't load up the post office with all 320 ballots in one day. So it will be staggered through that first, um, first week. So they're, and they said today, they're gonna start with the larger municipalities. So if you have a friend, a relative in Isha, Mount Laurel, uh, one of the larger municipalities that, that may have gotten their ballot right away on October 1st, and we didn't get ours in Delanco yet, not to worry. Um, they are staggering the mailing um, of those ballots over that first week of October. Um, the county will be do, um, posting information on their website. They asked us instead of creating our own um, pamphlets or, or uh, letters and things, suppose that we just link our websites to the county websites as they post information. 
uh, for people to um, to uh, you know get voter information. And uh, let's see, I'm looking for my notes. The state part of the executive order is that um, the state had to provide a way to track your ballot and also uh, by Labor Day deadline, on, online voter registration, the, the deadline to register to vote for this general election is October 13th. And um, you, people can now vote, uh, actually register to vote online through njelections.org. Um, did check that out. And one of the tabs there is uh, online voter registration. The only thing is that um, if you have to either provide a driver's license, which uh, or uh, your social security number, and if you do it with social security, you have to have the ability to do a um, electronic signature. Um, if not, you cannot use your social security number to, to register to vote online. A lot more information coming. Um, you'll see when I do correspondence, there's a letter from a resident um, that was sent to the township as well as organizations in town about. Uh, finding ways to provide um, more and better information about the elections. One thing the county clerk did uh, mention, and um, they're getting tons of calls ab about it, and you may have received it at, at your home, is the Postal Service, the U.S. Postal Service, sent out a information about the upcoming election and urged everyone to get their absentee ballot application in as soon as possible. And that is not correct for, for um, New Jersey in that there, uh, you don't need to do an absentee ballot application uh, as every voter will uh, in New Jersey uh, will receive a vote by mail ballot. Um, that's all I really wanna say at this time, uh, unless you have any questions right now on the upcoming election process. Right now, we don't know the locations of the, sec of the secure ballots ballot boxes for early for early drop off. They're not gonna be available and, and open until uh, the ballots are actually start being mailed out. And I believe the county clerk, Kitty, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the county clerk said that the these locations, these 13 locations throughout the county will be printed on the ballot. Hi. Janice, I have a yeah, question. I Janice, I have a question for you. So, Can you hear me, Janice? Yeah, John, sure. Yes. Um, the, the voting, you, you say that the only disabled will be able to go and, and vote in person on, in the on, booth? on a machine. You can vote in person through a, a paper provisional ballot. And that's for people who either threw away their ballot by mistake, uh, choose not to use their vote uh, by mail ballot. Um, you can go to the Pearson School on election day. The polling uh, times are the same, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you can vote provisionally, but you will be given a paper ballot. Um, the only people okay. that will be allowed to vote on a machine are dis uh, uh, disabled people who have a qualifying disability that would um, prohibit them from um, filling out a paper ballot. Okay. Just, Thank you. Just to piggyback on that, a provisional ballot is not the same as your regular ballot. Right. It doesn't hold the same legal status. So if you are concerned about your vote being counted, you should get that vote in the mail and then decide how you want to retransmit that back in. Um, unless, of course, you're disabled and have a right to vote on the machine. But the provisional ballot the day of is is provisional. It's not the same as a regular vote. Ballot, yes. It's provisional in that it will not be counted as a legitimate ballot until um, the county uh, confirms that you have not voted in any other way. Um, another thing too, one of the big changes on election day is that you can take your vote by mail ballot and say, and take it to the polling place, take it to the Pearson School. You will have to wait in line and you will have to sign in um, that you're dropping off your, your um, not provisional, excuse me, your vote by mail ballot. They are 
they must be completed in that you have, they will not offer assistance in completing a vote by mail ballot. If you come to the um, polling place with an incomplete ballot, um, they may not accept, accept it. You might have to leave, go fill it out and bring it back. They're not quite sure on that. The other thing, the other thing, which was made very clear to us today is that you cannot courier your vote by mail ballot other people's vote by mail ballot to the polling place that day. They um, it, you only can take your own. And again, Kitty, if I heard incorrectly, no, so for example- The post office can do that. Yeah, the post office. Well, and we all, some of the clerks that have um, nursing homes in their communities always said, wait a minute, we know that there's, um, there's going to be people collecting ballots from the people at the nursing homes who can't get out and bringing them to the polling place. Yeah. And um, they were told, no, that's considered ballot harvesting. And those ballots will be rejected. That the oh law, God. I know, the law is that a person, and this doesn't include to the polling place, a person can only act as a courier for three ballots. And that's not even to the polling place. You can only bring your own ballot to the polling place. You can courier other people's, up to three people's ballots to the county mm. clerk's office or to the county, but not to the polling place, only your completed ballot. So if you think you're going to take your spouses or your, you know, your, some, you know, another household members to the, the polling place that day, their completed ballot, it may be rejected. But again, this was today's they have a lot more meetings with the state and executive orders could be issued uh, it's making changes as we go along but that's about today's meeting so as we get closer to election day um you know we'll be uh linking more to the county's um website and that um that website for voter registration i we, uh, kitty and i checked it out that um njelections.org. And I actually even, it says you can find your polling place. So I put my, my um, address in there. And for the November 3rd election, it came up M. Joan Pearson School, which I normally vote uh, in fifth district, which is the firehouse. But for this election, not that you go there to vote uh, on the machine. It's only if you want to vote provisional. I like say I threw away my ballot. I, uh, it got messed up, but I, I, I said I didn't get it. I can still go vote provisional, but um, there's going to be a lot of ways and a lot of places to get your vote by mail ballot back to the county. So there's a lot more. I don't really, there's a lot more to go over, but uh, if anybody has any specific questions, um, please feel to ask, or if you think of something later, email me uh, or Kitty, and um, you know we'll be glad to get that information for you. The last thing as far as uh, my report, I just want to ask Doug, um, Doug, on that um, pilot for uh, uh, Sanker and Gletto for the Misfits uh, portion, which will be forwarded to Township Committee for their review um, uh, in preparation for the October 3rd meeting, um, is that for both buildings or just the one? They're only ready on 2A. 2B is still in the works. So we need more so information from them, Joe and I do. Thank God so for Joe. That, he does an excellent uh, job reviewing the financials and everything. So we'll we'll come back on the second portion when they're ready. So this is just the first building that that they now have their COs for. Their now will will the um the TC yes TCO the um second phase that they're doing and will eventually be built and occupied or is that going to be a separate pilot or are you going to combine it with the first pilot it has to be a separate pilot because the lease term runs different than the first term okay. so it's got to match up okay thank you sure and that's all i have right now um later under correspondence i have several pieces of correspondence Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, we've got uh, comments from Township Committee. Uh, normally, we handle this at the second meeting. We don't know if we're going to have a second meeting for uh, for September. Um, in the interest of 
time, I'd like to skip ahead to the consent, but does any committee member have anything that uh, they information that's timely and needs to get out uh, uh, to the public or needs to report on uh, uh, at this time? Fern? Yes, uh, from the sewage authority, uh, they're moving forward with their plans uh, for the upgrades uh, um, for the main sewage uh, pipes going, I guess, down Burlington Ave, over to second, over to the pump station, and then over to uh, the Beverly sewer plant. Uh, looking at lining, or I guess putting a lining inside the existing pipes and also upgrading and changing out uh, some of the pumps. Uh, their cost at this point uh, is at 1.5 million, uh, which they'll need to go out to bond for. Uh, and uh, in speaking with Tom, uh, he said on the current uh, loans that we have out, we have about two years left on those loans. And the plan is uh, to try and get those paid off before we get into uh, borrowing the 1.5 million uh, for the project. Uh, it's pretty intense, but uh, I guess our, our main sewer pipes that go down uh, the center of town, uh, I guess were put in in the 1950s. So uh, they've done some extensive uh, homework on this and uh, they're still working on it, but that's the direction they're going at the moment. Thank you. Any other committee member have something they want to? Uh... I do. Um, just a couple things from the women's club. Um, this coming Sunday, they're having a, a fundraiser sort of event for sharpening tools and uh, garden tools. Um, that's going to be 8.30 to 4.30 um, by Frank Sharpening Service. And also, um, in case anyone was wondering, we did decide to do our 5K uh, just virtually this year. So we're not going to have big crowds in the streets running, um, but people will be uh, going along the route um, October 24th to October 30th. So uh, putting minds at ease if that was a, an upcoming concern, because that would be the end of October as usual. That's all I got. Thank you. Kate? Uh, uh, yeah, I just have a question um, regarding the OEM meeting that we had. Um, I was just wondering if Jesse uh, contacted the electrician since we lost our phone system when we lost power and if that was being taken care of. I mentioned that to Richard and that problem apparently was outside the building with Verizon. Oh, it had nothing to do with what um, Bob Dovey had taken care of or what we did in-house. Yeah. Yeah, we reported a text. Tell it's, it was a switching issue with Verizon. Okay. Oh, well, that's good right. to know. I thought it was related to the power outage, which it was, but not... It was, but not, not the impact on the building. Okay. It was outside oh. of our control, no matter what we did in the building. We were, there was no power to, to uh, so, run the phones. So our phones will run on the generator then? Correct. Okay. All right. And thank the, you. The, yeah, thank you. Uh, the other thing I just did want to mention that RLS uh, received um, Top Green Provider Award and also uh, the Best uh, Cold Storage Award. Um, and best of South Jersey biz. So um, I did send an email to Tony Leo and congratulated them and said that it looked like they were hitting home runs and that we were glad to have them based in Delanco. So uh, he was very pleased that they're here and it's nice to see the businesses in our town receive recognition for what they're providing. All right. It. I have other items, but they're not that important. I can bring them up the next time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kate. All right, consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine and will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Are there any items uh, on that list that any committee member would like to have removed? Questions, additional questions? 
Hearing no objections or uh, resolution 2020-112, uh, award a contract to South Jersey Sanitation for the Historic Riverfront Neighborhood Solid Waste Collection Program. Uh, resolution-113, authorized change order number two for the West Avenue and Babe Ruth Ball Field Improvement Project. Uh, resolution-114, uh, authorizing change order number one for the 2019 Road Improvement Project. Payment of bills, uh, general, uh, $66,329.26. Payroll, $187,726.38. Capital, $37,000. $484.34, public defender fund $350 even, dog fund $486 even, unemployment fund $84 even, escrow trust $4,077.75, housing trust $516 even, municipal open space $4,308.77. Approval of minutes, uh, May 22nd, 2020, and July 13th, 2020. Approval of facility use requests for Gateway Park, uh, Saturday, September 19th at 3 p.m. Um, approval of the consent agenda. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Brown, second. Oh, that was me, Ms. Holland. And second by Chris Holland. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olet. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Real quick, um, the minutes are from six twenty two twenty twenty, not five. Oh, yep. Yep. That's right. Typo. Thank you. Does anybody want to change their vote? <laughs> <laughs> Got to cover it all. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes was for June 22nd instead of what I read is May 22nd. Thank you. Uh, meetings open now open to the public for comments and questions in session two. Any comments from the public? Please state your name and address. Hi there. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Yes, this is uh, Stephen McLaughlin once again, uh, 740 Rank Opus Avenue, and I will keep it brief. Um, just want to start with a quick <laughs> word of thanks to the committee. Um, I'm really pleased to hear that you're working on uh, getting some sidewalks along Coopertown Road. Uh, I know that that's a complex issue and it's going to cause a lot of headaches, um, but, but uh, I'm really cheering you on, so uh, that's going to help a lot of people. Um, so <laughs> moving on. Uh, what I know now that I didn't know at the beginning of the meeting is that, that Hawk Island uh, is now uh, belongs to Delanco. So I'm imagining plans will continue moving quickly. So I will uh, just reiterate that Hawk Island is a fragile ecosystem. We, we need to th be thinking of it that way first and foremost. It's a little uh, oasis of biodiversity right between Rancocas Creek and the Delaware River, a uh, nexus of two different um, aquatic ecosystems and you know, I, as someone who grew up in Delanco, I've seen a lot of woods cut down around here and a lot of big trees, you know, a lot of big <laughs> collections of big trees that, that are no longer here that, uh, that were uh, when I was a little kid just because of construction and, and this and that. Um, so yeah, I think less activity on Hawk Island is better. Um, and I, I want to, I just have one, this is an even briefer conservation type, you know, tree preservation note which is that I, I know that the uh, Rancocas Greenway Trail will be running down Rancocas Avenue, underneath the train bridge, and then over to Pennington Park. Um, I've been out looking at that little area uh, uh, between the train bridge and Pennington Park out on my rowboat, and it looks like there's a really narrow strip of trees. You know, there, are, there used to be a lot more trees there um, with the developments that went in. It's just a pretty narrow strip of trees with some underbrush. Um, I'm really concerned about those trees, and I hope as you, as you continue making your plans, I just hope that as, as many of those large trees along the creek uh, stay there as are, you know, as are possible. Um, because when those trees come down, there's nothing behind them except for the development. So uh, that's the, those are my comments. Um, thank you. Thank you. Just, just to clarify something that uh, you made in your initial comment was that there's still uh, two parcels out there on Hawk Island that are privately owned. 
uh, and there uh, are two large tracts of land that are claimed by the state of New Jersey, uh, approximately 40, 45% of the total land area out there. So uh, the township has, uh, uh, has two parcels out there, uh, uh, the one we've recently acquired and one that was acquired uh, some time ago. So. Um, okay, thank you for the clarification. I, I really appreciate that. It's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but uh, one piece. Yes, I've read a little bit about the history. Yeah. Anyway, I, I love, Hawk Island is a really interesting place and dear to my heart. So, and I know many Delanco residents feel the same way. Right. So thanks for taking, you know, treading lightly. Appreciate the comment. Any other comments, please? Uh, yes, this is Catherine Tersich Keeley at 740 Rancocas. Yes. <laughs> On a different well, computer. Um, right. I uh, just wanted to ask about brush pickup. I know that brush pickup ends at the end of September, October 1st, I think is the, is the end date. Is that correct? Yes, it's just. It's, 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 the end of the month, right. um, which is the the twenty first, it has to have five working days in so the twenty first of September or October. Yes, September. Yep. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, throw out an idea, which is to extend brush pickup through October. Um, a lot of towns in the area have seen fit to do this because of uh, the weather just being warmer as the months go on. Um, a lot of people do trimming trees uh, in through the fall. And I know myself, uh, I had a, a lot of brush last fall that I had to figure out how to get rid of um, because it was past the brush pickup time. Or uh, even if it wasn't brush pickup, maybe a way to drop it off at Public Works so that it's not sitting in our yards uh, ready for mosquitoes in the summer. So I just wanted to- Yeah, we have, uh, the reason why we don't do that because uh, leaf season starts, mm -hmm. okay, and, and uh, that's why we have to get things ready. And uh, I don't know if you heard at the beginning of the meeting, uh, we have like 8,500 cubic yards of leaves, last year's leaves that have decomposed that we have to haul out. Mm -hmm. And then we do actually do tree work. Uh, this one, the shade tree list, generally. We've been fortunate the, the last couple of times we've been getting some contractors to help us out. Um, but if you need to bring brush out, we have a dumpster here at the garage. Okay. Okay. You can bring it out um, at any any time, Monday through Friday, and then we're having a um, you know the cleanup in October that you can mm -hmm. bring out the uh, um, you know more stuff if you have household trash or debris and, and logs and brush or everything anything you want except for paints and um, you know, poison stuff. Okay. Is the is the dumpster just something that's open? Is it just for brush things or is it a general dumpster? Yes. Yes. It's just for brush. Okay. Brush and logs. That's all we have. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other comments, uh, public comment? I'll close this uh, second session to, to the public uh, correspondence. Mrs. Lohr. Yes. Uh, we have quite a bit this evening. Um, the first is uh, received a um, email correspondence from Alyssa De La Pena, um, formerly Alyssa Newman of Delango, uh, requesting appointment to the Recreation Commission, which does have two um, positions open, alternate one and alternate two. Uh, so we did receive that. I believe I did forward that to everyone. Um, we received uh, the email correspondence from Jay and Joan Cohen regarding the Halloween issue, which we've already uh, covered quite in, in depth. We uh, received correspondence from Dorothy Talavera of Delango uh, regarding the upcoming November uh, 3rd election. We, um, also included with that correspondence was, was to other organizations in town about uh, working to make sure that the residents uh, and the voters of the town have more information regarding the process for the general election. Um, and so again, I did do that in my report and we will make every effort to um, update the website, do email blasts and um, coordinated with the county on that. We have, um, again, in correspondence, we had that letter from the state DOT regarding their uh, alternative set aside program a grant program. Uh, Harry covered that in depth during his report. Um, 
for that. And he uh, explained that really um, the only thing that we really kind of uh, qualify for would be sidewalks on Coopertown and possibly Creek. Um, we received um, this one, we received the email correspondence from Ken Brownell he, um, regarding his, him receiving a delinquent tax notice uh, for the most recent quarter ending. Did everyone get a copy of that? Yes. yes. Yeah, he is asking, and we do have the um, documentation showing that uh, his um, envelope was mailed in time that it should have been received by the township so as to avoid uh, late fees, okay? Um, but it wasn't received until late August. So he is requesting um, that, um, that the Township Committee waive the interest for that the last quarter. Um, the Township Tax Office, it's a statutory, interest is a statutory requirement. Um, the tax office cannot waive that. So it would um, need a um, action by the governing body to do that. So I don't know if you're ready to take action on that, discuss that um, tonight, but that is entered as correspondence. And we also have a correspondence from a um, Fred Brody uh, of uh, Cross River Fiber. They are asking the use of the public right of way in order to uh, attach or install tele telecommunications, telecommunications fiber octave cable to existing utility poles, which they would have to get permission from the utility poles, but they also need the township's um, permission to use the public right of ways. And I did forward that to you, Doug. Yeah, I just want to let the committee know I just received that within the last few business days. This is a, we've dealt with this a little bit in the past over the years, but it's actually a hot issue again right now in local government law. So um, I'll be looking at it and, and give some advice as to uh, what we should do on the issue. Yeah. What's, and what's the name of the company? Cross River, Cross River Fiber. What do they do? Uh, are they? they install telecommunications cross, fiber optic cable. Cross rivers with fiber, apparently. Right. It's it's a uh, <laughs> their their project is to install uh, fiber optic. It's uh, called dark fiber, and, or or dim fiber, and that term describes uh, fiber optic that does not have a dedicated user. And it's basically excess capacity that's being uh, uh, put in for some eventual future use. Uh, the information that was in the package that uh, Janice forwarded to us, uh, Cross, uh, Cross River, uh, this fiber optic uh, network that they're establishing is for commercial use only, not uh, private or residential use. Uh, my question to all that was if, if, if this goes in, does that inhibit uh, one of our existing providers uh, from any need or requirement to put in residential fiber optic if uh, this commercial system is already in place? So um, I'm glad Doug's gonna take some time to take a look at this and uh, apparently other people are, are looking at it pretty hard too. So, so we can defer any action on this one. Okay, so the other correspondence that um, that would require action of the governing body tonight would be um, Mr. Brownell's request yeah. to waive interest. Uh, and right. also we have the letter from Alyssa De La Pena right. for uh, appointment to the Recreation Commission. Everybody uh, saw the e email on Mr. Brownell's uh, uh, Tax payment, the postmark, uh, and the three weeks it took to find its way to the tax office. Yes. How, how Any questions it, or? How much is it? Uh, what's that? How much is it? The interest, I don't know if, 
I do not have that. Um, it would be whatever has occurred to date. Uh, oh yeah, Aaron, you're here. That's right, Aaron is, uh, is here. Uh, let me just give me a second. She can actually look that up real quick. I thought it was something on the order of about $130, $140 interest. Okay, well, it's not worth well, it. It is actually not that much. Um, it's about $80, $86, I believe. Okay. But I can get you an exact figure. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. All enough to uh, take care of a resident. Yeah. I'm confident about my mail-in ballot now. <laughs> that, uh, that, Don't uh, take it to our post office. Yeah. No, the, the, the postmark, I think, was July 29th, and uh, it, it, uh, the received stamp was, what, August 25th? Yeah. Yeah. Something yep. like that. So, right. Yep, July 29th, it was postmarked, and then it was received here at the municipal building on August 24th. Yeah, I was close. And it only had eight feet to go from the drop box to the tax <laughs> office. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, waiving the entire uh, interest penalty in this case. I agree. I agree. Agree. So Doug, do we need a formal resolution for this or is it just a motion? So typically we do a resolution, Janice. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to just assign a number and we can sure. fill in the blanks. Sure. So it'll be resolution 2020-115, um, uh, authorizing or approving the waiver, waiver of interest um, for uh, the uh, tax, property tax for, let me get the property again. Um, 815 Delaware Avenue. Thank you. 815 Delaware Avenue. Right. For the, um, Aaron, what was that, second or third quarter? Third. Sorry, that was for the third quarter. Third quarter. All right. Third quarter 2020 taxes. We have a motion? A motion. Second. Second. Okay. okay. Who made the motion? I did, Kate. And second? I did. I think Thank I Thank you, Christine. Okay. Um, is it all in favor okay, or do you want a roll call, Doug? Be a roll call. Roll call. Yes, thank you. Um, let me find a roll call. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the letter of interest uh, recreation from uh, Ms. Uh, De La Pena. Um, uh, I would like to make a motion that we accept her. I did uh, speak to the chairman of recreation and um, she was at the concert Friday night and uh, they would like to have her on board. So I would like to make a motion that we accept her letter uh, to remember to be the alternate number one for recreation. Any questions, comments? Second? I second. second. John, go ahead. Second. Okay. Um, Good Mr. luck. Brown, Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olatt? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes, thank you. And I think I see uh, Ms. De La Pena is participating this evening. So um, congratulations, yeah. Alyssa. She's muted. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get that information to Aaron. Aaron, we'll get that out to you about meetings and meeting schedule and your oath of office and everything, okay? Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Do we clear up all your items? Uh, uh, that's it for correspondence. Fern? Yep. We had one more piece, I guess, of correspondence, but being verbally communicated from the Joint Land Use Board. Uh, it was uh, brought to our attention that we should uh, recommend to the Township Committee to send a letter to, I guess, nudge the state as far as the jug handle up there on Route 130 in Bridgeboro, uh, just to throw out a reminder that 
it's still a problem and it's getting worse. So I don't know if we have someone from the committee that uh, we want to take uh, some type of formal action of sending a letter to the state. Bern, when I, uh, last year I went to a, uh, one of the seminars with uh, Mark Renza when he was, you know, county. Um, I think, does anybody know if Mark moved on to the DVRP? He, well, he, he retired. He retired. He retired. <laughs> Oh, is he going to work for DVRPC? He was appointed to that. Uh, he, he explained to us how these things um, take place through the, um, it, it's like an eight to 10 year process, unfortunately. Exactly. Uh, he went to Doug Handel up and down Route 130. And, uh, you know, basically the one in Burlington got the first look because of Amazon going in. And uh, I, I think it's just going to take time, but, you know, we need, to contact that's why i thought if mark was at the dvrpc he'd be the one to uh, possibly call but um i gotta track him down he's there time. through the county as, a, as their designee and i think because he retired my guess is that it's going to be somebody else now uh, okay. Okay. Uh, may i comment mayor go for it Can uh, you i'm in the process of pulling together some information um uh, as you all know, uh, my husband Dave worked for the State Department of Transportation for 33 years, and there's a lot of experience and knowledge and uh, information I can get about uh, how things function. Um, one of the things he commented about was the state requires a 25% financial contribution. Um, and since that jug handle is in Willingboro in an Edgewater Park, um, that would be a possible uh, po problem. Uh, another problem is the wetlands that are in that area and the inability to expand outward to enlarge that jug handle. Um, I did a little research with Edgewater Park. They have before their planning board this coming Thursday an application for um, a development of warehousing behind the Cramps Liquor Store property, that whole farm field orchard area of 55 acres. Uh, they are proposing a 704,000 square foot warehousing office space, uh, et cetera, complex. Uh, I'm trying to find out if part of that process will be improving the intersection at Delanco Road and Pennypacker, where they would actually reconfigure it to make it a functioning intersection as opposed to what it is now. And to also find out if they are making any improvements to the intersection of Mount Holly Road, which is where the Arby's is, um, because of all the truck traffic that would now be coming from that development. So I have an email out to the county as well. Um, so I'm still trying to gather information that might help you all decide whether you want to, um, you know, address any correspondence to the state or the county about the uh, jug handle. Thank Sounds you. like it's being worked on. Pardon me? Sounds like it's being worked on. Long well, I, I did, I have to follow up with the county, but they've already given approval for the Edgewater Park development. So I guess they went to them first before going to Edgewater Park. Yeah. Yeah. So Edgewater Park. What board can we put your? I, is anyone a What board can we put your husband on? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still working full time, so. <laughs> we gotta find a board to put him on. <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. That's for sure. <laughs> is anyone attending the September seventeenth meeting at Edgewater Park? Uh, 
I don't know. I'm, I was still assembling the information, so I was going to be sending it out tomorrow to, um, to Mr. Olette and to um, Lori Van Gendren and Dan Martin and let them know, you know, yeah. what was going on and that there was going to be, it's going to be a Zoom hearing on Thursday night. Right. I have no idea how a huge application like that's going to go, but that's that's the plan. All right. <coughs> Thanks, Kitty. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for the, the background on that. Um, let's see where were we? We're finishing up the correspondence. You're I didn't done? have any additional. Okay. All right, uh, status of uh, coronavirus, coronavirus disease, COVID-19, uh, community impact update. Uh, committee gets uh, the daily reports from the county health. Uh, we've had uh, local case counts, uh, an uptick. Uh, I think 12 or 14 additional cases in the last three weeks or so. Uh, again, the, the variability and in, in when someone gets tested and when the test results come back and when they count it, so there's a little there's a lot of wiggle room and all that, but uh, uh, the end result is our numbers have gone up a lot in the last uh, three to four weeks. So um, that's uh, certainly impacts our thinking in, in a lot of things. The Holly, Halloween question uh, that we had, the next item, uh, reopening the basketball courts and so forth. So um, that's all that I have to add on that. Like I said, I, the significant items I pass on from the conference calls uh, that are bi-weekly now from the uh, county health and the governor's office. So, uh, status of reopening of basketball courts. Uh, any comment or input on that? Uh, is anyone from REC on board? Well, as their liaison, uh, we discussed it at the REC meeting, and I believe Phil may be on the phone tonight. I'm not sure, but um, apparently all the other towns have their um, courts open, and um, it was the decision of the Recreation Commission to appeal to the township to let us open the courts. I believe Phil's on the line, sir. Yes. Yes, I am. Hi, Phil. Uh, yes. We, we did have discussion in reference to the basketball courts. There's pros and cons, as with everything. Uh, but the majority of the members of the Recreation Commission uh, came to the conclusion that we should open the courts. Um, we will have public works monitor the, the trash problem that we normally have. And uh, local mem the members will be going by on occasion to check the amount of people. And at any point, if we deem it to be a concern, uh, we'll notify Jesse and John at Public Works to uh, shut it down again. Any committee members have comment on that? Or no, that sounds through. like a plan. Do we know from that uptick of cases, though, age range yet? Or is there a way to get that information? No. No. Yeah. You never release any, uh, any, any, any specifics, age, sex, uh, anything uh, on COVID positives. So, all right. Um, yeah, we'll keep a close eye on it. And I'll open up the uh, open up the courts and see how it goes if we get a big stampede from a lot of out of towners that are you know jeopardizing uh, health and safety here then uh, we'll we'll reevaluate or if the trash uh, people don't take care of it and create a bigger problem for uh, our public works and recreation again we'll take a look at it all right i appreciate it Okay, thank you. Thanks for the uh, the long taking the long hard hard look at that. Uh, status of uh, fall townwide yard sale. I think uh, we covered of, right? covered that in my report. Um, yeah. Just to see, if it, you know, where we were at. We we uh, only have a, uh, a handful of people signed up so far, right. but um, you know. It, it is outside the the groups are not participating so um you know right. we can take a look at it again uh, as you know we'll be at the october 3rd see where the town's numbers are all right thank you. cases 
All right, discussion items. Uh, I know there's some people that have been hanging on uh, waiting for this. Uh, continued discussion, fence regulations, proposed ordinance options. In the back of your packet, uh, Mrs. Lord included uh, a prototype uh, ordinance uh, that creates uh, an administrative approval process for the fences. And the other one is a uh, uh, example uh, ordinance to modify the uh, uh, fence restrictions to uh, not to exceed uh, six feet. Uh, and um, defines that from the front building line. Uh, current regulations uh, limit a six foot fence uh, to the rear barrel building line. So uh, what's the committee's thinking on this? And I think in either case, whatever, we decide that that has to go to the planning board for consistency, correct? Yes. In our, yeah, it's in the zoning section. I was in favor of uh, doing the modification so that uh, it comes underneath administrative review uh, for these fences that don't fall underneath our ordinances right now, but have been I guess I don't want to call them grandfathered in to some extent. Um, again, allowing the residents to improve their properties as opposed to just continuing to let the fences deteriorate. So option two does give that choice or that, that ability though, right? So it fixes the, the six foot issue for for this particular case that brought it to us but it would allow anyone to to remediate uh, yeah. a lot of there are already a lot of pre-existing fences uh, that have that are six feet and do extend uh, to the front building line that obviously are in are not in compliance right. um, and this would tend to satisfy and uh, eliminate the, that issue uh, Some of those fences that uh, are six foot, I don't know if they're, I don't want to mention any particular property, but they, uh, the six foot fence, if it's a corner property, it's not a good deal. I don't know if anybody went to see this gentleman's home. Um, yeah. And the way his fence is, it really doesn't affect. Um, it doesn't affect any look. True. And I think that's the whole idea of the fences for being six foot at the front property line. This looks like it's the side yard and it doesn't affect the neighborhood. Um, I took a good look at it and I, I think that there has to be some way to take different things into consideration. One thing may be the part that actually faces the front of the street, maybe that could be lower. I've seen fencing uh, where it's either open or lower, four foot, and then the side fence would be six foot. Um, I know the residents that lived there at one time, they moved to another uh, property in Delanco, and that fence was really saved them from people who had this vicious dog that lived on Burlington Avenue. And uh, eventually that dog was gone because another resident's dog got bit by this dog. But so, I mean, I hate to see a resident have to go to the joint land use board for a variance, but someone does need to control how these fences are done. Because if you ride around town, you're gonna to see some that have um, fencing in the front yard, all the way down the side yard, that's really like a barrack type thing. And I don't think that's what our goal is. Well, but this, this gentleman, I, I don't know if you can take them on a case by case or if the joint land use board can do some kind of a uh, review I think they need to be involved somehow, um, where Scott Taylor needs to be involved. He's our planner and um, we wanna make sure that what we're doing is not gonna affect the look of the town. And 
the way this fence is, it's not going to affect the look. Yeah, well, the option two would only would allow a six foot fence to the front building line, not to the front property line. which there are several cases of that already in town where they go to the front, front of the building line, the front building line. But... Is it possible to send? I, you know, I, I had uh, inquired with a couple of the planning board members and I got diverging viewpoints. So one was in favor of the administrative review and one or two others were uh, firmly against that and uh, uh, never really got a, a affirmation of relaxing the fence height issue to the front building line. So um, is it is it possible, uh, Mrs. Lord, that we could submit both of these and get get feedback from the planning board of, you know, through... I was actually going to recommend that. Yeah, and it very it wouldn't be a formal consistency review. It would just be very, uh, an informal, yeah. you know, uh, review for their recommendations. I think they should receive the photos of this man's property as well because it's it's relevant. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's, it's not all the properties are this small. It's a half a double. Yes. And um, it it and it um. The way he needs to replace his fence does not affect the look of that street at all. Agreed, agreed. See, and, and I just wanna throw in two cents here. I mean, the reason why we have these provisions is not because it's always a problem. It's because every once in a while it's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's like why we had to pass an ordinance to have people not throw snow back in the street because one day somebody threw snow back in the street and we had to pass an ordinance to say, you can't do that. I, I sit as the zoning board attorney in Burlington. Most of our variance applications have to do with corner lots mm -hmm. and, and, and the other high percentage is fences. So um, it's just something, and, and nine times out of 10, they get granted. But it's for that one situation that comes up every once in a while where it is gonna have a negative impact on a, on a neighbor or uh, create an issue for um, visibility or some other planning concern that's valid. So I think we, you know, the planning board may well say, look, yeah, th this is, you're right in this particular instance. And if this person came in for a variance, we would likely grant it. But the concern of the resident is, is I don't want to spend the money. It's going to cost me more to get the variance than it would to put the fence in. Exactly. Um, so I do think just sort of floating both of these ordinances and the concerns to the board is, is a good next step to see where we can try and find a route through on this. Okay. And there was a, we also talked about whether to um, change the application procedure, let it go to the joint land use board, but instead of charging a hundred dollar application fee, $500 escrow to pay for the planner to review it, uh, the legal ads on you, we make it a $20, a very inexpensive application fee. Don't involve the planner. Yeah, they're at the meeting, they can give some advice. And, but they would still have to put the ad, the paper, and they still have to notify the neighbors. But you could probably, you know, cut uh, uh, five, $600 off the application fee. That's another, because the administrative review process is subject to second guessing uh, by members of the Joint Land Use Board and others be very hard for the zoning officer, instruction official and administrator to have the same view that the joint land use board would have. That's in effect what you're doing is creating a mini joint land use board for that purpose. It's not the same as what we do when somebody is taking an existing use, they change the ownership and we're saying, you don't have to go to the board for that just because you change the ownership, nothing else changed or you're changing it from one store to another store because our law says, if you make those changes, you gotta get a site plan. So it's a, that's more of a technical review. This is a judgment call. That's the concern about administrative review. I agree, except the only thing here is that the judgment is only really if it's a public safety and health concern. In other words, yeah. if it causes a site triangle issue or it's, 
you know, and I'm not saying people won't second guess you, but it yeah. could be fairly limited scope of why, if they meet the other factors, they shouldn't be able to replace a, a fence in kind. Because we are talking about somebody having a, a pre-existing fence there that they're talking about just replacing in kind. Yes. Yeah. John? A uh, uh, question in, in Burlington City, the zoning board. So if I live in Burlington City and I want to uh, change my fence, whether it be on the corner or do, do you have to put up fees to go to the before the zoning board? Uh, in Delanco, we had a zoning board and you would just go see the barber up the street and he'd sign off or make you go to the planning board. Administrative review. <laughs> yeah. So it's Burlington Township. And, um, and, and yes, which, which again, John, is the way it is now here and it's the way it is in every town, pretty much, even this provision that we're talking about with the six foot fence, where you where you decide when four feet is ends and when six feet can start. It's very common for towns to say six feet starts at the back of the house. It's also very common that you see them up along the front of the house and people create more usable yard by, by and, you know, they don't have four feet. They don't have any fencing up in front of the house. They just box off their, their house and, and create their yard that way. So it's to some degree, it's a matter of taste and some degree, it's a matter of, you know, what, what does that mean in terms of how visually it's going to look around town over time? If people can put six foot fences all the way up to the front yard where four is permitted now, I don't know. Is it appreciable difference? I think it's a matter of taste to some degree. I, I don't know. I just, you know, people want to improve their house. They want to put a new roof, new gutters, new windows, new doors. Uh, you know, they don't need to go before the land use board. They're spending enough money on their home improvement. And um, it's just, it's a shame that they have to go through that process. And, you know, that professionals have to look at an application, you know, for a fence. When these wooden stockade fences don't last forever, they actually look kind of crappy after a while. Um, I, I don't, it's just a shame we have to talk this thing through so severely and it's just a fence he's not putting an addition on i've seen garages be permitted these pole barns in close to people's site you know like they just make the neighborhood look like garbage and i'm not going to say where but um you know that's okay but for the man to have uh for this family to have sort of pr uh, protection and seclusion on their side yard, which these small neighborhoods, their side yard sometimes is a, is a very valuable asset to a house like that. So I, I don't, I, I like the administrative review uh, idea. And the, if the administrative side finds it's too tricky, too doubtful, or, you know, I'm sure that administration talks to the mayor, the deputy mayor or a township committee person, uh, or even our administrative professionals, if it has to go before the board, then so be it, you know, that's, um, you can always kick it uphill, right? So that would be my. Well, if we, if, if we float at both of them to, you know, option one, option two, administrative review and, and changing the six foot height to the front building line, uh, let the, the, the joint landing board weigh in on that. And also what Richard was describing, some kind of fast track, uh, smoother, less expensive process for issues such as this. Um, or, or Mike, combine getting... the two to drop the, uh, change the six foot to the front and have administrative review for the more difficult ones for, before that. This particular piece seems to be a no brainer to allow six foot to the front building line. Yeah. And so those issues wouldn't even have to go before administrative review. So if you adopt both of them, you've reduced some of the conflict. It's another thought. If perhaps if they have to go to the land use board, you deem it a pre-application fee, uh, you know, to get a uh, people go yeah. for, for, you know, hey, they want to get a feeling of something or the flavor or something. Maybe if you a pre-application process, then um, they can go right in and either get you know, like uh, move to the next step or get kicked up to the full blown uh, application. Okay. So kick it all up there and see what they say. All right. Seems to be. We'll, we'll send both up, up to the planning board. Is that 
Is that the consensus? Yeah. Yeah. And all right. Ms. Martin, how do you, how do you want to receive that? Both as, as these both these example ordinances? Is it what else do you need? Mayor, I was going to um, uh, sec as Secretary of the Governing Body, just do a memo to Kitty as the Secretary to the Land Use Board right. um, and, and do it formally that way. Right. Should uh, the information from the, the gentleman on uh, the, the, the Mr. Bladeswood that started this, uh, should that information be included that this is the genesis of it or just leave it as a standalone and without any... Um, I don't know. I would ask Doug only I, if, because if he would end up before the board, could that have prejudiced the board? No, I'd, I'd rather than know what we're what we're yeah. looking at and thinking about that's driving us to send these issues right. to them. Um, it's. I just think it's helpful to put it in some in some context and some analysis. So we'll we'll include uh, everything that uh, uh, yep. Mr. Blazewick uh, sent us uh, back in July, uh, his letter and yep. the photographs, yep. uh, and that will, should illuminate the issue for the planning board okay. and where we're stuck. Any other comments on that? All right. Uh, Continuing discussion, proposed ordinance amending the Township Code, Chapter 216, Governing Park Regulations with regard to waterfront regulations. There is a, uh, a draft ordinance that Mr. Heinhold has prepared, if I can find it. Uh, your packet, and it makes uh, some small changes, but hopefully changes that are workable that uh, prohibits the docking of motorized vessels on park property and uh, uh, that's pretty much it of course I can't find it any uh, committee comments on that there it is right after the fence stuff got it yeah, uh, ordinance 2020-13, uh, uh, visitors, users shall not use park property as a motorized, uh, uh, as a motorized watercraft launch or dock or the, uh, and deletes uh, canoe or kayak from uh, paragraph Q. I'm in favor of the way the ordinance is uh, crafted and uh, put forth, because it still allows access. Uh, Kate, John, I don't have any comment on that. You're cut out there. You do or don't? I don't. I don't have a comment on it. Okay, Kate. Well, I'm glad that we took canoe and kayak out of there. Um, I know Fern had raised that issue um, regarding the public uh, trust uh, having um, the public having access when you're on, because we don't really have anything to do with the water. We can't control what happens in the water. We can't stop someone from docking out there. But um, but I'm glad we removed, we actually removed canoe and kayak. So I think people in this town should be able to uh, put a canoe or kayak in. Okay. So we're gonna put this on for a first reading. Well, reading. Does, does this, do, do we block ourselves from doing any dock improvements at uh, 200 Ash Street uh, in the future? Uh, it's just an ordinance. So if, if we get to that point with 200 Ash Street, we can know we, and we want to specifically allow something in a specific place, then we can put those right. regulations in place at that, that time. Okay. Until we know what that looks like, um, I won't yeah. worry about it at this point. Okay. 
right? Um, you so can um, have that yeah. for first reading and public hearing on October 5th. You can do that tonight. Yeah, introduce tonight and have your public hearing on October 5th. On the 5th. Is the committee okay with uh, initiating that tonight? I am. Yes. All right. Yes. So. Um, okay, it's ordinance 2020-13, amending the township code at chapter 216 governing park regulations with regard to waterfront regulations. First reading by title only, set public hearing date for October 5th at 7 p.m. All right. So move. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll call or, or? Yes, roll call. Roll Mr. call. Yes, Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Well done. All right. And, and I'm uh, sorry, who, who made the motion in the second, Mr. Olette and? Ms. Fitzpatrick. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, item three in the, let's see, proposed Eagle Scout project at 414 Rain Cocos Avenue. Uh, I think there's been some emails circulating uh, uh, from uh, uh, Amber Permutter from the Environmental Board and uh, uh, Scott Taylor has agreed to provide uh, professional expertise in, in that project. And uh, Amber- I to comment. Uh, like to comment on that project, if I may. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fenimore and DJ attended um, the Recreation Commission meeting, um, and, and his, Mr. Fenimore was a little concerned that so many entities are involved, and uh, that um, I know we're having the uh, Scott's use as pro bono which is great because I imagine that what he may do is something on a larger scale than what this young man is proposing as his Eagle Scout project. Um, Mr. Fenimore just wanted to make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that we don't lose, that DJ is, it, it's his project. Yes. And, um, and that we don't lose that in the scheme of this because so many people because originally he met with Phil and I his father and he met with Phil and I at Gateway Park and we gave him some ideas of different areas where he could uh, do something and one of course was at 414 Rancocas Avenue and he was um, excited about that West Avenue we, we he had a couple different things uh, so I just want to make sure that the board and the township committee realize that this is an Eagle Scout project and it can be a lot bigger than an Eagle Scout project. But right now, that's what we're dealing with. If we want to do um, the scheme for the whole park, that's another story. But let's just focus on his project at this time. Agreed. Agreed. Disagree. Um, without going, you know, with the, with the popular, uh, I, I just feel that we have a chance to extend Gateway Park, which has a uh, very long history. And, uh, you know, we, we have uh, a rec commission looking at things and we've always gotten professional engineering concepts or planning concepts on our parks and uh, Field of Dreams, how long that took. And, uh, you know, now we, we received a grant for a uh, event lawn. I, I don't wanna see too many cooks in the kitchen. I would like to see the, the um, before an Eagle Scout project goes in, I would like to see the township have the proper uh, basis down, okay? It's just like- I understand that, John. I understand that. And I'm not saying that we don't have a plan but that we do let this young man present his project as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, listen, I'm giving my opinion. I, you know, proper walkways, uh, you know, whether they be pavers, concrete, uh, 
you know, uh, you know how we're going to handle parking at events and so forth and so on. I, I just think it needs a little more planning professionally. Well, that, I, th I think that's where Mr. Taylor may help out in working with uh, uh, DJ Fenimore on 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 what his his ideas are, and if e EAB wants to do something in another part of that that uh, 414 that that fits in with that, and if Historic wants to have a, a interpretive display or something regarding a you know. A structure that was on that property and that fits in some other area uh, so that's i think uh, uh mr T scott taylor can can kind of give that global view to it and let uh, dj fenimore accomplish what he wants to do and it fits in and it all works together um, and one thing isn't squashing something else so uh, let the, the young eagle scout uh do his work. Is uh, is Phil McFadden on the line? Yes, I am. What what's your what's your vision there, Phil? Uh, our like with most of the parks, John. As you're aware, uh, we had Steve Lord do the Vine Street Pocket Park. Mm -hmm. Um, we had offered, like Kate had stated, we had offered three different items to the gentleman or the young man. Uh, one of them was 414 Grand Cocos. The other one was restoration of the Eagle. And the other one was addressing the entrance off to the left at the West Avenue Nature Trail. Mm -hmm. um, he proposed his idea and presented it. And then we had uh, Environmental reach out to us. Amber reached out actually to Kate. And we had referred Amber and the gentleman DJ uh, to work together so that this way they can come up with an ultimate plan. And then we also had Peter from Historical come in. Um, basically what we're doing right now, they're at the phase where uh, Mr. Templeton actually reached out to Scott, like he had said, he's got uh, he's going to do a pro bono work with those groups. Um, the mission is, from my understanding, they haven't presented anything yet, but from my understanding is DJ is going to do his project, which involves the area that he's going to be working on, along with he has to do his own fundraising, his presentation. Uh, these are all the uh, requirements for him to uh, expand into the Eagle Scout. Um, and then under the guidance with EAB and historical are also going to be doing the ultimate finalizing of the park. Again, all this is, is basically right now it has, we have not been presented with an overall project because we're, we basically were waiting for, uh, Mr. Taylor to get on board. Uh, to work with the both all three groups and then uh, do their presentation to us. Okay. So that, that park ultimately will be done. Uh, the Eagle Scout project, EAP's project, and Peter's project. It's basically the three groups working together to, again, beautify the, the park area there. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Any other questions on that? Okay. Uh, item four, request for creation of a Delanco Parks Department. Uh, this was in response to a correspondence uh, from a month or so ago from uh, the EAB. Any comments or uh, suggestions on that? Well, I would like to comment um, as a member of REC, a current member of REC, but also as a member of REC from years ago for over, well, I guess, 23 years I was on REC. Um, it was a good idea when REC uh, did release uh, the sports to DISA. That's worked out very well. But I think REC has done a, a, a great job uh, maintaining our facilities, 
working with the different um, groups. And um, I don't know why we need another department in town. There is another opening on REC. If someone from EAB would like to join REC, that would be um, a nice addition. But I don't know that we need Galenko. Um, it's not like we have a lot of parks. Um, I, I don't know that we need that. That's, that's just my uh, take from REC. And as their liaison, I'm representing that um, they don't feel that a parks department is necessary. They have maintained our parks. They keep an eye on things. And if you go around town, they look pretty good. So that's my, that's my uh, feeling. Any other comments? I was pretty much in the same thought of what Kate just expressed. Uh, if recreation uh, has been overseeing the parks uh, along with the activities that take place uh, and then DISA has been doing the sports uh, by, I guess, creating a, a parks uh, department or uh, group, I think we're gonna end up with uh, more crossover uh, with the, uh, I think it's just adding another layer. So, uh, uh, I haven't given any more depth thought as to, uh, you know, what does recreation end up doing after that? I know they do the concerts, they do the, the um, the parade, uh, and maybe a couple other activities that they oversee, mm -hmm. uh, but I think their bulk, the bulk of their job has been overseeing our, our parks and uh, here in town and coordinating with, uh, I guess, Scott Taylor and, and Harry Fox as far as uh, putting the stuff together uh, and maintaining the, right. uh, the fields and with John Fenimore. So I think we already have a team there overseeing the parks uh, so I'm not sure where what we gain by adding another uh, another group. Yeah, I'm a, of that uh, same mind as far as a, another layer, and I think that the best mechanism is is to uh, continue to uh, invite and include uh, uh, new members. In, into you know uh, recreation and all our organizations as as vacancies appear and so forth to to get uh, a new look at things and a, a different viewpoint on on different things. I think that's the best mechanism. The uh, rec commission is, is created by statute and uh, uh, and so it's got some very uh, uh, strong legal basis and our our municipal code has. Uh, multiple references to it and so it seems the best mechanism uh, uh, to strengthen that is to work from within and uh, continue on that path so any other comments there on uh, that topic yes i'd like to comment go. Uh, i go way back with kate when the uh the, the historical split from uh, you know the rec commission and dysa and uh you know one reason that the split happened was uh, the rec commission was so clustered up with the uh, soccer registrations and baseball registrations. And uh, it was actually a very good idea at the time. There, there had to be 40 or 50 people that got involved in the process. And uh, since the DISA has uh, went off on its own, it has been very well handled and to where, um, you know, they really come to our budget uh, not needing a lot of money because of the way that they uh, fundraise and the way that they have registration fees. Uh, so back then when we did the split, so now the question was, you have sports and all the you know sports teams, kids and everything, that's DICE. So what is left? Now it's recreation. And at the time, uh, we, we, we had a very good guy involved, uh, David Suter, who came from California and knew, worked for parks and uh, you know, he knew all about that. And um, so we had a focus on parks and, and recreation and the recreation events. 
such as the community day and the, uh, oh, the, the up at West Avenue, the, the haunted hayride thing. Um, and, you know, through the years, things have worked through recommission. And then as far as uh, parks and environmental issues, that's just something that I feel uh, that uh, both teams have to work together. And uh, the idea that somebody, you know, maybe uh, EAB should have a liaison into the rec commission uh, to attend meetings and to discuss issues um, that have to do with our parks. But, you know, this, I don't think this town is big enough to have a note. We, we, can, we have trouble filling the boards, you know, every year. We're out asking for, you know, volunteers. Um, so, I mean, to have another board, I, I, I don't see it. So, thank you for the time. Thank you. Anything else on that topic? All right. Uh, status of 2020 New Jersey League of Municipalities Conference. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to report, um, everyone had received a email from the league. I forwarded it from the league. It was an August 28th email uh, regarding um, pre-registration. This year's league conference is a virtual conference and they're offering pre-registration, which you can do online, either uh, individually, or if anyone is going to register for the virtual conference, you can let me know and I could do a group registration. Um, again, it is virtual. Uh, we have not received the um, list of virtual uh, seminars they're going to have or any of the presentations. So I don't have any, uh, any additional information, but that email from the league on August 28th includes a section um, to register, pre-register uh, online for the virtual uh, league conference. And um, if you register, if we register before October 1st, it is a reduced price. After October 1st, it goes up $10. So I just wanted to report on that. Great. Great. Anybody interested in that? Let uh, uh, Mrs. Lord know. And, uh, yep. As soon as possible. Like I said, you can let me know. I'll register you, or you can go on and register. They have a link right from that a league email that okay. was sent back from August 28th. All right. All right. I hear the clocks chiming in the background. Uh, let's see if we wrap this up. Uh, item six uh, 2021 request for professional appointment RFPs and volunteer board appointments. It's Mrs. Laura again. This is Laura again. Um, just like Richard said before, it's that time of year again. Um, I just want to <laughs> confirm with Township Committee that um, for the 2021 appointments, for your professional appointments, as well as your volunteer board appointments, that you um, would authorize me to use the same format that we've been using in the past, where we go for the professional appointments, it's by RFP. Uh, which is through the fair and open process um, and also volunteer boards. I put a uh, block ad in the Beverly B, uh, basically saying that if anyone is interested in appointments to any of the various uh, volunteer boards that we have, let me you know, send a letter of interest with a brief resume by a certain date. Um, I don't assume that's how you want to do it year to year. I double, I check each year about this time of year to make sure that you want to move forward with that process or if you wanted to do something different. So I would ask that the Township Committee either, you know, approve that we move forward with the RFP process and the volunteer notifications on our bulletin boards in the Beverly B. Uh, if that's what you want to do, um, you know, just any, any comments, suggestions to do it differently or as, as has been done in the past? Well, the past has always worked well, so. <laughs> let, her, let her rip, Janice. All right. All right. It's out we'll, the door. We'll get all that going for all 2021, right. believe it or not. All right, last item, uh, status of uh, Township Committee meeting for uh, September 21st. What do we got? We got well, nothing. <laughs> well, most most of the items, um, I, I was making notes throughout the meeting. Um, most of the items um, can be handled on October 5th, unless Doug or Harry, you feel that there's something that must be taken care of next week on the 21st. 
that can't wait to October 5th. Um, the only thing I would um, and say that if you just Township Committee decides to not have a meeting on the 21st, um, that you authorize tonight, just um, authorize the CFO to pay any um, bills that I can't wait till October 5th. But it's, it's, it's uh, usually not a problem. Okay. Doug, Harry, you got anything that can't wait? No, the only issue that I have is that that pilot and that can go on in October. That's not a problem at all. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, there's nothing that I need. All right. All right. So Janice, I guess we need to authorize Mr. Hodel to uh, pay off any bills that come due. Yeah, that, that can't wait till the October 5th meeting. Yeah, do a, do a, res do a motion to cancel yep. the September yep. 21st meeting and right. authorize the CFO to pay necessary bills. Yep. Two different motions, right? Or two? No, I'll say motion, all. one motion. All right, in view of the uh, cancellation of the September 21st meeting, uh, we, Township Committee authorizes the uh, financial officer of the township to uh, pay any bills that need to be uh, uh, paid by Prior to the October 15th. Yeah. Need a motion and a second. And a motion, please. Second. Second. All in favor. Yep. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. It's nice to see a nice turnout here. Yeah. yeah. Any, any other? Uh, is there a need for an executive session? No. Nope. Okay. Doug? Any other last comments? I, I have one last comment regarding DISA. Uh, DISA had their opening soccer Saturday, and it was so nice to see those kids playing soccer on our fields. Um, so uh, I just had to say that because they'll be playing, of course, up until our next meeting, but uh, it was really good. The kids were having a great time, and it was a beautiful day. So um, our our fields are working out. We're going to shut one field down and it needs to be reseeded, uh, but everything's working out good. And uh, I just congratulated um, Steve uh, or Sam James because uh, it was so nice seeing the kids play. They did a great job. And there was a woman in the concession stand who doesn't even live in Delanco, but her uh, grandson uh, went to Delanco when she was living here. And uh, she has since moved to Belmar. She came all the way here to run our concession stand because she loves the town, she loves the kids and um, and she had the time. So nice. things are working well in Delanco. Good. So thank you. Thanks for Lisa that. And Rick. Thanks for those comments. I have a, a question for Harry. Hi, Harry. You're not letting you leave before. Uh, <laughs> the, the letter you sent us about 200 Ash Street, you know, the structural engineering report yep. and the estimate for, uh, you know, making it safe for, you know, the start of a rebuild. Um, and then, you know, secondly, the demolition, okay, estimate. Uh, are, are we coming back to the table on October 5th to make a decision on either way or is um, this still a continue? Do you need to? Commitment from us either way? Uh, no, I don't. No. No. I, I just want, I, I'm just encouraging you to uh, try to come to a conclusion as soon as you can to move forward rather than just leave it sit there. Either, you know, fish or cut bait at some point. Yeah, just I would. Put it on the agenda to discuss. You know, speaking of the other organizations in town, um, you know, what their opinions are uh, of, you know, the building and the future. You know, like, um, you know, the historic board and, uh, you know, the rec commission and just just any comments to be forwarded to uh, yeah. Janice. You know. Well, I, I think, John, that the goal is to, now that we know it's not going to fall down immediately, is to come up with a plan to get the input from the community okay. as to what the options are. That's, that's the purpose. Get that process started and see, now you have an idea. Do you want to invest some money? to let it last longer, or do you want to try to get a decision, you know, by the end of the year, beginning of next year? It's not, it's nothing yeah. that needs immediate. We do need to seal it up. So that's going to cost some money unless, if you're going to authorize demolition, 
next month, then we wouldn't waste our time sealing it up. But if we want to process, if what you're going to suggest is a process that's going to take several months, then we I, should I, I, get it sealed up. It's up to the committee where we want to go. Nobody's correct question out there. Um, yeah or nay. I just wondered if we were going to be doing that October 5th. No, yeah. just the start of the discussion. No, we got we got time and space to make a make a decision and uh, and get more information and get the feeling of uh, you know what the future lies for that property. So, but okay. kind of we got John, is John Fenimore still there? John. Yeah. Hey, John. Yes. Hey. John, there, there, I, okay. saw, I saw a big, huge tree on the riverbank. I think it was Edgewood Ad. Or um, it, who who takes care of that, Mother Nature? Or uh, we just try let to, it flow? Try to push it back out. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been trying to work on that. We had one that was even bigger than that one. That it, it, it ended up at the boat ramp. Oh. And uh, I was. I was waiting to try to get it, but it had floated away. I don't know where that went, but that one there is enormous. Those things are terrible. Um, Let's see, I, 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 you know, I've been. Uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but I've been trying to take a little here and take a little there, and hopefully, it'll go somewhere. <laughs> <It's> okay. <awesome. laughs> Yeah, the state the state has no. not taken responsibility for what floats down their river. Yeah, so right. Wherever it sticks, if it floats true. down, if it we floats have down some the Union, on I'll Rain get Cups it. Avenue. Let's see. It could end up at Fern's house, Mike's house, right. Kate. Yeah. Who wants it? Harry's Who house. Wants it? <laughs> if it ends up at Union it. Avenue, I got it. Uh, yeah. 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 We, but when Rain Cups, this, we have. Boaters that take them out to sea. Oh, good! Thank goodness. We we could have a raffle and you know pick the date that the log floats away. You know, <laughs> the the yeah. county already uh, or the county the already board. offered to help to yeah. get it, but I am very scared because we put a new seawall up there. Yeah, well, he would have to get that excavator close to that, and I don't want to take any chances. Uh, unless, nope. unless we were to ride down the riverbank at low tide. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> too, too mushy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we're done. Anything else? I'm done. All right. Motion to adjourn. No moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. All right. Good night. Hey, Mike. Mike. Yes. Yo, Mike. <laughs> Where? Um, just so you know, the uh, costume gallery was cut over the weekend. I saw that. Hey, congratulations! Thank you, John. And and the <laughs> John, who cut that? Did you cut yes. that, or did they? No, no, they he hired somebody. They're a contractor. The guy's been keep the guy's been keeping in touch with me. I, I, I just stroke of luck that, and he's been you know calling me and emailing me and. and Every step of the way, he's, I got well, somebody to come in out there. John, John, with so. Jeff, you're good cop, bad cop. You're the good cop. He's the bad cop. He puts them on notice. Yeah. Tells them they got to do it right away. And the guy calls John. John <laughs> okay, I'll give you another day. I'll give you another day. He doesn't have the authority to, but he was listening to John. He finally got it done. But Jeff put him on notice, so he was on a 10-day notice, and then he called John. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I told him he, he's he's on his way. So right. <laughs> you better get with it. That's right. Be part of the program. He's going to put millions of dollars into there and spend some money on the grounds. How are we doing with the 7-Eleven? Um, well, the camp meeting grounds owner, has he paid his taxes? He's paid property taxes. He's in arrears on the uh, sewage uh, bill. He's uh, yeah. being paid that significantly. Well, I'm not on that board, so. <laughs> <laughs> But technically, if he doesn't do that, technically we shouldn't give him his mercantile licenses for his businesses. But it gets a little muddy when the property owner is not paying. You can't take it out on the tenants yeah. who are running the businesses. They get the licenses. And evidently, so, that, that church must have pulled out of there that was operating yeah. without a license. They're going. Yeah, it's normal. All right, All right guys.
All right. Good night, Good everybody. everybody. And Aaron, thank you. Oh, Aaron, welcome. thank you. Yes, you're welcome, everybody. All right. Nice thank to hear you. you. Have a good night.